Hello, guys and girls, and welcome to episode 11 of the VR Inside podcast. This is a weekly VR, AR, and MR talk show that is live streamed every Saturday on Nathie's YouTube channel. You can tune into the show live at 4 p.m. in Europe, 3 p.m. in the UK, and 10 a.m. in Central US. And if you miss the podcast for whatever reason, you can catch up with it every Sunday where I upload the whole video to my own YouTube channel, Virtual Reality Oasis. Or alternatively, if you just want to hear the audio only version, you can check it out on Google Play Music and on iTunes. So today is a bit of a special episode because we're actually pre-recording the show so we can have a special guest on the show and I'll introduce you to him very shortly. So we'll also be around during the live stream on Saturday. So if you want to chat, we will be there to sort of communicate with you guys as well. So you won't be missing out on that at all. So I'm just going to introduce you to everyone in the room. So he likes to hang out with penguins in VR. And that is Nathy. Hey, man, what's up? Hey, man, how are you doing? I'm wearing your uh, gift there. You like it? Yeah, that looks really, really nice, actually. It looks cool. Yeah. Especially yeah, with all thanks. your Bioshock stuff in the background. Very, very nice. <laughs> thanks for making me a fanboy. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, our next up is uh, in space. You will be able to hear him scream. And that is Zimtok 5. <laughs> <laughs> that, does, that does not help my reputation. <laughs> well, uh, any, anyone who's seen this from Other Sons video, you'll see that he uh, has got some lungs on him. He can really scream, this guy. So uh, I definitely go and check that out. Took down the alien. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, that cleared problem. Uh, so next up, he has a serious grudge against ring lights for some bizarre reason. He likes to smash them up. It is the rowdy guy. Yeah, man, they, they call me a rowdy for a reason, right? No ring light is safe in, in my neighborhood. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And then we have uh, John Pell from Gunfire Games. Welcome, John. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, very nice to have you on board. And uh, last but not least, myself, the host of the show, Mike from Virtual Reality Oasis. So uh, in today's episode, we've got a, a busy show for you guys. We are talking about the Pimax update. We've got the Vive Focus, uh, the Game Awards, uh, which has got some VR and AR game nominees. Uh, Black Friday VR deals is definitely not one to be missed. And we're also going to be talking about Gunfire Games and, of course, their new game, From Other Suns. So I just want to kick off today, obviously, with the Pimax. We, we tend to talk about the Pimax at the beginning of every show just recently. So if you're getting really bored of the Pimax, let us know, because uh, we'd like to know your comments and feedback. But this is just going to be a very quick one, so do bear with us. Uh, but I think it's fairly relevant. So uh, it's been about a week now since the, the Pimax Kickstarter has ended. So all the backers have, have funded it. And now they're starting to send out the survey emails. And what that means is that if you've never done a Kickstarter or anything like before, essentially you get a survey email about a week after, and they just ask you to confirm all your sort of uh, shipping details and everything else. Um, so Pimax recently sent out their survey, and it was interesting because they said that if you bought a bundle, which was like the headset, the base stations, and the controller bundle, that the headset would ship earlier. So you'd get the headset around sort of early February, but you're not going to get your base stations or controllers until April. <laughs> so I was I was a bit confused about this because they never mentioned this in the initial Kickstarter campaign, um, that they would have separate shipping timings for the accessories and, and stuff like that. So I think a lot of people as well would have probably changed their backing, um, what they backed, because they would have maybe gone for the headset alone and then maybe bought some base stations and controllers for the Vive because they're obviously going to be compatible. Uh, instead of going all in on the bundle and then having to wait a couple of months until they actually arrive. So uh, what do you guys think about this? Like, I, I would be really disappointed right now mm. if, I had, uh, if I'd backed it, the complete bundle, that is. But did they say that they were going to ship it together with the Pimax, first of all? They never said how they were going to do it. No, so you can actually choose to ship it with the Pimax, but you have to wait to April, obviously. So you can have the whole package together in April. Jeez. Or you can have the headset in February and wait till your controllers and the base stations arrive in April. So you can you can yeah. basically choose on whether they're going to ship it or not to you. So you can yeah you can choose to have it whether you have the headset early uh, in February, but it'll just be the headset alone. Or you can it's have like it, Amazon delivery, isn't it? It's yeah. like you know, okay, yeah. ship it to me as they're ready, or ship them to me when they're all together. Mm. To you know, it's exactly. Weird. Who's gonna wait? Who's going to wait, right? Like, you want your baby headset, your little baby hammerhead shark to arrive. 
yeah. so that you can read that. <laughs> yeah, but exactly. And I think, you know, for those that, that kickstarted this, if you wanted the full set, I think if you'd have known this prior to the, the, the Kickstarter being finished, you maybe would have just backed the headset alone and then found the Vive controllers and the, the base stations yeah, exactly. elsewhere, you know, uh, because then you could have had the whole experience come February when the headset comes out. But now, if you don't have a Vive already, you're kind of screwed in a way. Uh, so, it must be um, hard then if you like, because then you, you'll get that headset. If you, if you want it early, you get that headset. And the only thing you can do with it is like, look at it and... <laughs> yeah. Hard to do. Yeah. yeah, I got the same. I got the same with my well, Samsung Galaxy time. right now, man. Like, I I don't have a Bluetooth adapter, so I need to look at my beautiful headset <laughs> oh, that I come no. to. So I, I totally know the feeling, man. It's it's horrible. I can only like touch it and then just talk to it in a way, but I can't use it. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Like, I've actually had to. I sent Nathy my uh, Bluetooth yeah. adapter. Um, so hopefully he can he'll get that in the next couple of days so he can actually try it out because yeah. um, a bit like me I, I, he really struggled uh, getting it, the Bluetooth set up initially at first because you know if your Bluetooth is built into your motherboard uh, it's not powerful enough uh, to to actually communicate with the controllers whilst it's in your case so you need to uh, attach your external antenna for it to communicate yes. properly and obviously uh, the the antenna for some reason wasn't supplied with. Nathie's motherboard, so I sent him mine because they're both Asus boards. So hopefully that will work uh, for him. But yeah, so Nathan, you know that the struggle is real when it comes to having a headset and not being able to use it. And I think uh, a lot of Pimax backers are going to feel that way come early February. Yeah, yeah. You, I mean, you you pre-order it in a way, and you have like certain expectations of when it's getting delivered and how. Um, so yeah, it, it's a shame in a way. I, I'm really curious as well how they are going to ship that large amount of headsets are they able to handle that you know i mean we have seen rift struggling as well at the start with cv1 like is that gonna happen again with bimax i mean 50 50 or is it like a higher chance yeah. that's gonna happen i don't know i wonder if they like kind of set the scene right because i mean lots of people were that was the kind of make or break case for them uh you know when they were making that that critical decision it's like rift or vive what am i going to pick and you know some people were like well i can wait but yeah, the touch controllers came so much later than I think was initially anticipated. And here, it just kind of feels like people have been swindled a little bit. And I can understand that, you know, because the expectation is that things are going to ship together. But yeah. it's funny they, now, especially the base stations are coming later, because that is a spec. Yeah. That's a design spec that has been public for, what, a year and a half now? Yep. They have been like advertising it as a full package and not as like, hey, uh, this is like an extra and you can get it later. Um, I Like as, as Mike said, I think they, they knew that they couldn't ship it all together from the start. So they just kept it uh, under the radar in a way. And then now they really need to tell everyone because, I mean, yeah, you're about to uh, ship everything. So you need to be honest to everyone. And is there, is there a like, reason? Oh why they ship it later because i mean it's not i don't think anyone bought a pimax for their controllers right i mean they, they, they buy it for the headset what is the reason that they're delaying it since so you, you you can still get the headset in february but you you know unless you own the five base stations or controllers you're not going to be able to use it really um obviously with the controllers they literally just at the end of the campaign announced that it was going to have a trackpad or thumbstick oh. so they they changed the design really yeah. late on in the game so they've got a lot of work to do and a lot of manufacturing and tooling to do. So I can understand why they've delayed it, but the fact that they didn't communicate that clearly at the beginning is a bit disappointing, I think. Yeah. Now, before you get away too far from the uh, from the whole Bluetooth headaches uh, topic, I wanted to bring up something I meant to bring up last week, uh, which is a question. For anyone who's got a Vive, has anyone actually used the Vive tie-in to mobile? Uh, what I mean is it has Bluetooth capability, that can alert you to, oh, I think, upcoming calls and things yes. like that. I've never yes. even tried it. Nathie, have you given uh, it a go? No, but I did do some research on that uh, when it launched and also six months later to wait for some updates, you know. But I heard it wasn't that great, um, like in a way where the connection wasn't coming through that well and people couldn't hear you. Uh, but I don't know. Like, I haven't really tried it. So I, this is based on the Internet. And, you know, the Internet can be a very... Uh, mixed place of opinions. So the nearest, uh, I suppose the nearest, more, the nearest kind of component I mean, that's like nice, that is probably nice the feature. Oculus Rift. It's a nice feature, but I don't know. I, I have never really heard anyone using it. When I yeah. bought my Vive, I was like, wow, I can even call with this thing. You know, it's really the future. But in the end, I never used it. So <laughs> well, there's also know. the knock, like this, like knock knock. So if you're in VR. 
on the Vive. Oh, no, no, I don't know if the Rift yeah. has an equivalent <laughs> where you've got like a software button on the screen and your wife or whatever can walk in and like push a button to basically <laughs> give you a knock knock in the headset. Like that's literally, they patched that in shortly after launch. And I always wondered, like, who's using that? I mean, maybe it's useful <laughs> to, like, one dude out in, like, Tallahassee. But, like, <laughs> I, I, tried like, that, I tried that no, once, and it didn't work for me. Like, I, it didn't I work tried for you. it, it didn't, I didn't hear a knock. <laughs> maybe I set it up wrong, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but this is the thing I never understand. Like, th th there's these lovely things, and maybe uh, maybe John can, uh, can, can say this, but, like, when you're developing software, right, you have to kind of look at the kind of... 70 30 of like who's going to actually use this function should we really develop it you know is it something that makes sense to kind of put out there um because there's so many features like this that you see them spending time and resources on you just wonder like who was thinking this was a good idea i think with like uh especially with uh valve i think they do a lot of just let's try something throw it against the wall and see if it sticks especially yeah. like with the vibes they're like that would be cool what you know i'm sure it was like a group of people were like that would be cool and then they just went off and did it and like Cool, it shipped with it, or hey, what if we did this? And and yeah, like you guys are saying, if nobody's using it, they're probably just like, well, why bother supporting it? Yeah. <laughs> to be fair, though, that's how the VR market probably started, right? Well, let's yeah. just try this. <laughs> a lot of research yeah, has been done in that way. Like, I mean, they, they start off with trying something, and sometimes it doesn't work. I mean, I heard this story once about like sticky notes. There was this guy who yeah. who, uh, who said like, oh yeah, we 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 tried developing a glue. And uh, you know the glue doesn't work. You know, and he presented it on like a, on the on the conference, and there was a company in there. And said, "Well, we're actually looking for a glue that doesn't work that well." And so the sticky note was born. <laughs> what? Wow. Yeah, that's that's true. That's a true story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were trying <laughs> to actually. They were trying to create. I think it was on a, on a military contract yeah. in the U.S. Mm -hmm. They were trying to create like the strongest glue possible. And they yeah. came up with this variant, which was like the weakest glue possible, <laughs> and it ended up yeah, selling like like yeah, that. Yeah, it note. Bizarre, bizarre. Well, we're seeing that in we're seeing that in VR right now, aren't we? I mean, like we're seeing that right around the place. Like, what con control scheme doesn't work? What hardware feels wrong? Like all that kind of stuff. We're going through that right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, like, I want to say one last thing about like the Pimax because, uh, like, usually uh, when you want to build up the hype for a product that launches, I see some companies also like doing a video on where they go to the factory, and you see them like getting made. Uh, like, has Pimax already started making those HMDs or those controllers? Uh, are they ready to go or not? Mm. I, I know this is like you guys can't really give an answer on this, no, but no. Like, there's no, yeah. you don't know. But I'm but no, I, I, I agree. Like a video like that would put a lot of people's mind at rest. I think you know, yeah. especially with the these this recent announcement that you're gonna have to wait. I think some reassurance from them that they're gonna be shipping out the headsets early February would be very reassuring in a way. But what I would say is that if you've backed a Pimax and you want the controllers and the base stations, I would start looking for them now because come January February time they're gonna be rare as hen's teeth to get rid of these to get hold of these things. So um, I would start looking now to, yeah. to get Vive controllers and base stations. But I'd be interested to know what John like. If any of your team interested in the Pimax, or if you sort of looked at it in any way, or are you just not interested in sort of looking at this as a device? Uh, it's, it seems interesting for sure. Um, I mean, it's it's really we're. All of our games have been published by Oculus, so it's kind of like we're we're kind of in way tied to that hardware. Mm -hmm. um, but the, all the virtual reality stuff that comes out is really interesting to see. Just kind of see what the level of interest is. Where you know, if it's one thing, does it does it is this is this the thing? A lot of people I'm sure are asking, is this the thing that's going to bring everybody in, or is this just another just you know split from the yeah. kind of already standard? Mm -hmm. So it is it's interesting to watch for sure. Um, yeah. definitely kind of that hang back for now. Yeah, definitely, especially like because we've discussed this before, you know, that it seems like the whole industry are going towards mobile, whereas Pimax seems to be the only one that's really pushing forward in terms of like real enthusiast level VR. Yeah. So like, you know, Oculus and Vive are, are very sort of focused on the mobile market right now. So it's it interesting. Thing, I think I think it's great. Sorry, they're Pimax focused is, externally. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, that's what we know publicly. That's not necessarily what's happening in the R&D shop. So true. just, that, that, that know, is a very different thing. But <laughs> what, what I mean, what it's saying. nice to see that a yeah. company like Pimax can bring in so much money with the promise of making a next, yeah. next gen headset. I mean, yeah, that means that there is a lot of interest, right? Yeah, Even absolutely. from current, because I, I assume that a lot of the, of the backers are people that actually already own a headset or... I, I, mean, yeah. I don't know, of course, but from what I've what I've heard from people is that a lot of people already own a headset and they just want like the next step up. Yeah. yeah. 
No. I mean, like the, the the numbers, uh, like that's also a thing. Yeah, like you don't really know how many people really like bought one. You also got companies that just buy like two hundred of those. Um, you know, so it's like, yeah, is everyone like, let's say, uh, Sweetwiver and like pre-ordering one, or are there also companies that say like, yeah, yeah just just do me like uh, twenty of those, uh, and uh, or like like maybe buying some themselves. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Nathan yeah. makes a good point on, on stats and stats inflation. Mm -hmm. I can imagine the number of Windows MR headsets being inflated just because it's got Microsoft's name against it. Um, you know, that that, that is, is a, a fair amount of padding if we were to look at their statistics. Mm -hmm. You know, similarly, I would say that how many businesses buy a PSVR, right? I mean, they've, they've crossed a million uh, in terms of headsets sold. That's a great figure. Don't think there's too many businesses out there other than like web cafes, you know, buying buying that up. The business applications for PlayStation aren't aren't, aren't mm. large. Yeah, mm. true. But yeah, going back to obviously, you know, the 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 focus on mobile, it kind of ties us in nicely with the Vive focus, uh, <laughs> which is a standalone headset from HTC. Obviously, uh, you know, they've recently announced some more information about it at a show uh, earlier on in the week. So they're actually ditching uh, the plan to release a Daydream headset. Uh, they were going to sort of partner up with Google and release a Daydream headset together with them, but they're no longer going to be doing that now. And they haven't ruled it out in future, but right now their focus is on their own product and their own platform. So the Vive Focus, just to go through the specs just very quickly, is going to have a Snapdragon 835 processor, uh, an AMOLED screen, uh, two front-facing cameras to do inside-out tracking, very similar to how the Windows Mixed Reality platform works. It's actually got a physical IPD adjustment wheel, which is a, a very nice uh, implementation. Uh, it has got a headphone jack, so you can use your own audio, but it also has built-in audio, um, very similar to the Oculus Go, in that it's got slots in the head strap, which channel audio down from the headset itself, which is a, a nice feature. Uh, it's got a micro USB port for, for charging it up, uh, and then uh, it, it features six degrees of freedom from the headset itself, uh, which is very interesting because the Oculus Go has th uh, three degrees of freedom from the headset and a three degrees of freedom uh, controller, whereas the Vive Focus has uh, six degrees of freedom with the headset and three degrees of freedom with the controller. So that's kind How? of a little... Well, it's got... That's what I want to know. Like, what's the technology behind that? Because when I read that, mm -hmm. I was super cynical about it. But like, is that under wraps or do we know anything? No, so so it's the two front-facing cameras that are going to provide that. So it's a bit like the the Windows Mixed Reality platform. That's how it uses the tracking with these two front-facing cameras. So that's how the Vive Focus is going to do the same thing. Um, we don't have any indication of price or release, but you know, compared to the Oculus Go, that's going to launch at you know 199 bucks. It's got to be have to be aggressively priced to compete in that market. I think. Um, it's kind uh, of technically uh, spec. I'll bet you it'll come out for 399. Yeah, guess. but that's the thing. It's not competing with 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 the Go because they are like focusing on the Asian market only. That's true. You know, that's it's true. not coming to Europe or or like America. So, and and we'll that's later. like when I when I saw the release of like the the because there was a live stream. You know, they announced it through a live stream, and uh, when I first saw the headset, I was like, I don't know, is this like a headset for kids in a way? You know, it looks kind of like a rubbery thing that you can throw around. You know, like the design, I, I don't really like it that much. But let's say from a European perspective, people are like, yeah, nah, that's that's too bulky. But from an Asian perspective, it actually fits like the style what people like there. You, you get it? Like, I really have the feeling that that's weighing in in a way. I'm not sure. Maybe I'm just just. But I think so. I yeah. just, I just, yeah, I saw a picture color. on Facebook of like where someone compared the the Vive Focus to one of those Croc shoes, and <laughs> it really looks like it. It really does. I don't know why, but it really does. Like, dude, if you're gonna wear it on a video, people say like, "How did you get the Vive Focus? Did you import it or yeah, something?" No, I just bought it at a shoe store, man. <laughs> Yeah, so like like Nathy said, it you know it looks like they're just uh, going to be focusing on the Asian market uh, at launch, but you know I, I'd imagine eventually it will be coming to the West um, when we'll all be able to check it out. Um, but yeah, it will be interesting because this is like the direct competition to the Go, right? So we've kind of got this um, battle for mobile VR yeah. as well coming, which is going to be very very interesting indeed. Um, but yeah, like like uh, you know, Oculus said at their Oculus Connect event, you know they've got their sort of VR enthusiast level, which is the Rift. Same here, they've got their VR enthusiast level with the Vive, and then they've got the focus for the on the goers, as they refer to them. But but um, it's only China, only it's not even the entire Asian market. I, I, I presume it's oh. it's only China. Well, 
is that like a test that they're testing out the, the device there before they like go uh, worldwide, or what is the, or do they really I don't not really intend think it's to? I don't think it's a test. I mean, uh, like uh, HTC has like a really good like market in in like China. You know, like mm -hmm. they got a really big HQ there. You know, they do a lot of events there. They work together with all kinds of companies and developers. So I think like launching it there, like I, I think they they have been uh, advertising this for a while there now. I mean, we haven't seen the advertisement. But I think they have been hyping this up for a while now. So, so they don't it. even they other, don't even consider bringing this to the to the Western market. Uh, so. I like I, I don't really see this thing as like a Western. Then they need to make something else because I don't have the feeling this like design wise at least. Well, they just make it black, Nathy. That would sell it. Uh, it doesn't have to be any other. I mean, the, the, the garish kind of blue color is is, is uh, maybe off putting, yeah. right? But and that's I think the it would thing. Be the same like, thing to the American market. But the yeah. okay, like like China as a market can stand on its own. And the other thing that I would say is there are other VR headsets that we haven't talked about on this podcast yet that are exclusively in Asia. Yeah. You know, mm. that that are that are competitors, direct competitors to the Rift and Vive. Yeah. And the kind of footprint there, I'd be very interested to look at the numbers, who's winning in that market. Because I bet but, you it's uh, very different to who's winning here. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. Because when I looked at the statistics, they had like a pie chart of the the different VR headsets that sold, mm. and there were some brands on there that were bigger than Oculus uh, over there that I'd never even heard of. Yeah, it, it, could be, right it could be that just much more people buy VR there. I mean, maybe maybe mm. seventy percent of their market is there anyway. Then mm -hmm. we need an Asian correspondent. If you would like, please write to. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but there is one thing. Like the, the, I think the Vive Focus will have some success there because they have been linking it to Vive Part since the start. Like they have Vive Part running for a while. This is like exclusively working together with Vive Part as well. So people, I think a lot of people there use Vive Part. You know, like oh here we're like, hey, give us Steam. You know, give us Oculus Home. Give us some some more platforms than only one. But there, it's like I think people are really like attached to mm. Vive part there. At least yeah. people have used the Vive before. Yeah. But yeah, I definitely like that, that this is kind of the way things are going in a way because I like the idea of having a headset on the go. Uh, because like you know, I've got so many friends and family that I'd yeah. love to show VR to, but I just can't get them to where my PC is in my little Smeagol cave area. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> You know, I'm imagining the breadcrumbs <laughs> leading into your game like, <laughs> exactly. I'm, I'm sure yeah, man. Yeah, man. Um, so having a mobile headset on the go, you know, that's completely standalone that you don't need a phone for, because I'm yeah. like an Apple fanboy, so I don't have an Android phone, so I never got into the Gear VR scene. But having the Oculus Go or something like this, you know, would be ideal to take to a party or something like that and get all my friends uh, on the hype train for VR. Um, but John, like, I don't know, uh, you know, what you can say about this because you know you've been involved with Oculus um, for some time now, and I think, am I right in saying that Dead and Buried was kind of a demo for the Oculus Go, um, or, or was yeah, it shown it was, off in any way? I mean, it was if it's if it's a full fledged game, but it was definitely meant. That's why if if you bought, I think at the time if you bought a uh, Touch, uh, you got it free. So it was basically kind of like the pack in game because um, we just it, it was a social game and it was like a touch game so it was definitely like let's get every let's get this out to as many people as possible so it's a yeah. chance for like everybody to play it and try it um so yeah do you think um you, you'll be um making uh, like a port of this on on the go or anything like that or are you looking at that sort of that product to develop games for in the future or is it something you can't really talk about I mean, I can't really say too much. I mean, it, the other thing too is it's it's, uh, it's unlike uh, Kronos or even from other Suns. Like, uh, we came on to Dead and Buried, and it was like kind of an internal project they had been working on for a while. So it's like it's up to Oculus at that point if they want to bring us back to do some cool stuff with it. Um, you know, yeah. we're 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 always open to that because we love working with them. But okay. it's it's kind of an it's like an Oculus IP at this point. Mm. Will the control scheme work in that game? Because isn't it a single controller, or am I wrong about that? Oculus Touch, uh, Oculus Go. go. Oh, Oculus Go, yeah, it's a it's a kind of a small singular controller, but um, I'm I guess sure you could still do a quick draw or something with that. Yeah, yeah I mean, it, I guess you wouldn't be able to like do the dual wielding, but you definitely could. I could see a way doing it with a single controller. Quick draw yeah. could be fun. Yeah, that yeah. would be nice. That would be nice. Look, look you're already yeah. selling Sim a copy. <laughs> I know. Well, <laughs> <laughs> hey, I played the other one. I had loads of fun. Actually, uh, it was some of the best Wild Wild West stuff um, that I've I've actually touched. And I think for some reason, Wild Wild West goes down very well in VR. Like the multiplayer was really good, especially when you had like trains passing and stuff like that. So oh, yeah. um, 
something like that in VR. I mean, again, the thing that I like to think back to is Goldeneye. You know, when I was a teenager, oh, that was yeah. the thing that we went from house to house playing and just fucking love that. <laughs> Any game that can captivate that kind of gameplay on the go even headset to headset. I don't know if they've got any standalone headset to standalone headset networking. If they did, that would uh, be a dream. Dude, this is like the beginning of like handheld VR. Like this has been gone for a while where you had like your uh, Nintendo uh, DS or like a phones and you were like, hey, can, do you have a cable as well? You know, yeah. Let's, let's Remember, it. I met my wife with a Nintendo DS. So uh, I've proven <laughs> the fact that wireless handheld gaming works very well. You, you've actually no, but just I think that you both nerds, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that too. <laughs> that roast. That roast. But um, no, I think it's interesting with all those specs of like the, the the go and also the focus. Like it will be so much easier for people to join up at like a certain location and, and play yeah. a, a game against each yeah. other in a way yeah. wireless. So yeah, that's that's gonna be nice. And even something like uh, VR chat would be such a nice application for a platform <laughs> like that. You know, like like me and Nathy jumped into to VR chat with Rowdy uh, and uh, and Lonely Viper as well, like recently, and we just had such a, a blast playing VR chat. Like it's the craziest place. I've yeah. never been in it before, and I just like opened my eyes to the world of VR <laughs> yeah. chat. Like it was the maddest place ever. But like something like that on a, on a mobile platform would bring so many more more people to the platform, and it would make it really yeah. vibrant community there. Uh, so that would be really really cool as well so i'm excited about the social aspect of mobile yeah, VR as well dude that's crazy like you buy a headset for maybe like 200 bucks and you, you open it and suddenly you're like smoking a cigarette with a penguin man <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly that's that's the dream right there there's not a thing you can get in there stuff. right now Nathan, but uh <laughs> they, they they should just take that clip of you saying that and put that in their like trailer for the headset you can smoke cigarettes with a penguin like what more do you want in life yeah exactly <laughs> So moving on then from obviously the Vive focus to the Game Awards. So the Game Awards are coming and they've got nominees for the best VR and AR games. So here are the nominees. Obviously you can go and vote yourself and I'll put a link in the description down below so you can go and cast your vote. But here are the nominees for the uh, VR and AR games. So we've got uh, Super Hot, we have got Star Trek Bridge Crew, We've got Lone Echo and Echo Arena. They're kind of bundled into one uh, vote. Uh, we've got Farpoint and we've got Resident Evil 7. So Ooh. out of those five titles, one by one, I'll go around the room. Which one would you choose to be your best VR AR game uh, for 2017? So I think I'll go with Wait, Nathy first. Repeat them one more time. Super Hot, Star Trek Bridge Crew, Lone Echo and Echo Arena, Farpoint, and Resident Evil 7. Ooh, that's, that's tough, right? Yeah, that's I, tough. I, for me, it's like, really for me, it's like, or Super Hot, <laughs> or Firepoint, because I think Firepoint is like the underdog here, yeah. for sure. Because Firepoint was like the first uh, game for the PlayStation VR with like an aim controller, and it worked, like it worked really well. Yeah, yeah, that one, yeah. It's so exactly. cool, it's so cool. Same got one. That was oh, like, so awesome. it works so really? well. No, really it works incredibly well. The gun presence is better than anything else. Yeah. Well, I don't know, Rowdy. Have you tried this? Yeah, I, I did like six videos on Farpoint or something. Oh, you did? <laughs> and, and and how does it compare to the rigging that you use with the Vive controllers? Ah, the Pro Chief. Well, I haven't really like played that much with the Pro Tube yet, but it's um, it's it's not. I, w I would still say that the Farpoint controller is better because it's a controller itself. And with the with yeah. the Pro Tube, you still need to like put the put the things in. You have more flexibility with the Pro Tube, though. Uh, you can yeah. like uh, uh, get like all the um, all the things out, and uh, you can like uh, reload manually, and you can like yeah. uh, throw grenades. So you have you have more flexibility in that way. Uh, yeah. But in terms of like control schemes and like you know just ease of use, I really think that the Farpoint controller is. Uh, it's 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 yeah. really nice. The thing with, with PlayStation, of course, is it's mostly forward facing. Hey? You don't you don't have any enemies coming ah. from your back also in uh, in Farpoint. Not not anywhere I played at least. You do. Uh, not often. Not often. I, but you I do. Have you have the little crab you. guys come at you oh, from really? behind you. Depends on how fast you're going through it though, because they do. Ah, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 If you and also if you play multiplayer, be, that's right. Yeah, but in I, the end, it was a front facing thing. Um, but yeah, uh, going back to what I voted, I already voted, so I mean, I'm saying something that I don't really need to, like, <laughs> that's the thing. But I voted for Super super Hub, but if we start talking about, like, Farpoint again, I, maybe I kind of regret my vote in a way. 
But I don't know. Like, yeah. Uh, if super hot wins, I quit. <laughs> I quit VR. <laughs> yeah, 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 I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You didn't like We've discussed part, this what? before. Yeah. We have. We have. Yeah. I, like, that. for me, like, I think Farpoint nailed it down with, like, a new controller, and but super hot really pushed VR forward in a way. Mm. What mm. about you, Rowdy? It's a, it's a hard. I mean, I really like Super Hot as well, uh, just because of the game mechanics. I think it's a, it's a really cool title, but um, I'm not gonna. I haven't voted yet, huh? so I have, I haven't done that yet. Um, <laughs> but I think, I mean, I've, I'm always saying on like the, on like pretty much every video and every live stream and every podcast, I always say, oh, I really want like more single player experiences that have like a good storyline. Uh, and out of those, you have basically what well, Farpoint and uh, Lone Echo. Uh, and Lone Echo also has a great uh, multiplayer with the Echo Arena. So I think my vote actually goes to Lone Echo. I think that's uh, okay, nice it's one. a great single player experience, uh, great graphics, yeah. great storytelling, um, great character development. It's basically, I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it's quite short maybe, mm -hmm. uh, what you expect from a single player experience. Although I still did like, a, I mean, I still haven't finished uploading all the videos. I finished the game now though. Uh, smash my ring light while playing it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think that's what my vote goes to. Lone Echo. Okay, cool. Really good, isn't it? I mean, I think, I think the, just, to, just to touch on that as well, I felt that the first, say, two hours of gameplay in Lone Echo is probably some of the best like cinematography in a game mm. and definitely the nearest to human experience I've had yeah. with a non-human yeah. That character who you're, you know, you're a robot, but the character you're dealing with, what's her name? I can't remember. Alicia Rhodes. Yeah. Is Whoa. that her name? <laughs> Alicia Rhodes. Yeah. Yeah. Is that the actress or voice no, that artist? That, or that's, that's that's her name, Captain Rhodes. Alicia Cap Rhodes. Oh, Captain yeah. Rhodes. That's why I didn't recognize uh, yeah. the first name. We were not on a first name basis. At least. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. I, I got to know. Did her you talk well. to the devs? Did you guys get a little bit of uh, <laughs> background scenes? I was uh, taking notes. But it was yeah. it was special. Yeah, it yeah. was special. Yeah, it's kind of like that's the thing. I, what I notice is that uh, how do you really vote? Like Rowdy votes because he wants the story. You know, he 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 wants games that have a good story. I'm like, hmm, I like story too, but I also want to have games that, for example, with like Doom soon and Skyrim and Fallout, they push VR forward in a way. So I think that that Super Hot also had like a, an effect definitely, on that. Yeah, but that's it. Like definitely. everyone has like their own reason to like vote on a certain title, you know? Uh, like, let's say if I played Resident Evil, I'm like scared of horror games. I would never vote on that one because I'm too scared for that stuff. Do you get my point? So it's well, like- I, I agree. Yeah. I mean, I love Super yeah. Hot and I think it really, it's it, it's still up to date. One of my, my favorite games, I think, and games that I just yeah. like, you know, just jump in just to have like some some fun. Yeah, just because the I mechanics mean, we also are so played Star cool. Trek. I mean, we also yeah. played Star Trek together. It was really funny, but in the end, it's not a game I came back to in a way, you know. Or so it's kind of like, yeah, it's it's a mix of like different uh, like things. Uh, so, what's your vote, uh, Zim? I like the other guys. I I'm, I had trouble thinking it through. Um, so I was actually leaning towards Slow Echo at the beginning when you posed the question, yeah. but I've settled somewhere else. Uh, super hot. hot Although I appreciate its merits, I don't think it's you know deep enough an experience. Or I suppose I don't share Nathy's uh, opinion that it, it's pushing VR forward. I think it's a good demo, but beyond that, some of the scenes are cool, and you know I, I don't think it's a backward step. But um, Bridge Bridge Crew doesn't belong on the list, in my opinion. I think that was mm -hmm. uh, I think it's got the Star Trek name. They did a decent job of giving us four player co op. Yeah. I think From Other Suns does it ten times better. Um, so, nice in terms of oh, wow. in terms of picking, I'm going to back the winning horse here because Resident Evil Seven and the feckin' PlayStation market is going to win this vote. Go on, guys, uh, because it was not only a great single player that had the right texture right the way throughout the atmosphere was right. The DLC, which is normally just a cash in, was actually separate games, independent totally playable, some of them replayable ad infinitum um, that were really, really positive experiences. I was a bit reticent going into it. There's a room escape game, there's a repeatable survival game, there's a card game, and all of it carries the same 
nasty flavor of Resident Evil. Yeah. The only thing that I don't like about Resident Evil, which would pull me back in the other direction, is that it's inconsistent. It felt like two different dev studios made the first half and the second half of the game. Like halfway through, it kind of does this funny switch up, just like what happened in Alien Isolation, where you're like really into the experience. And then all of a sudden the tone changes. It's like, well, hang on, now I'm playing a console game, whereas before I was in a movie. You know, so mm -hmm. that's the only thing that made it to me feel a little bit disjointed. But I've got to say, the total package—it's like five games in one. The, so the problem, Resident Evil the problem that I have a little bit with, with Resident Evil, and I, I think that some people has that as well, is that if you look at the other games that are in this list, they're games that were developed solely for VR. I, all, all of it's the a games, fair point. All of the games in there, and I, I respect point. Resident Evil a lot huh, for for bringing that title, which is—I mean, they they did it basically like to, just to tease us a little bit, I guess, to bring that also to VR. Um, of course, you know, it's not with the move controllers. Eh? It's just with the, with the controller that you play it. That's another good point. That's, that's another Those are thing. two very good counterpoints, Rowdy, I have to yeah, say. So, and um, that is for me the reason why, but I, I do, I, I mean, I, I think it's great that when, when, uh, when other developers that normally make PC games also bring their title like at a VR mode or at like a playable in VR mode, I think that's yeah. great. And for that alone, it already deserves to be, uh, yeah. to be nominated or maybe even... Nah. Um, I mean, compared to all those other titles, like Resident Evil was like the the biggest hit of all. Yeah, like the, the the hype of that was like humongous. Like on on social media everywhere. Like I'm playing Resident Evil now. Everyone wanted to tell other VR enthusiasts, I'm playing this game right now. Mm -hmm. You know, so like still still not the scariest game I've ever played in VR though. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think we'll come to that shortly. <laughs> Um, so, John, what about you? If you had to choose a game from, from that list, I know it's a difficult one. What yeah, would you choose? Um, I don't know. I feel like uh, like like Lone Echo and Echo Arena together really makes a super compelling like argument just because you have two very different experiences and it's kind of like almost like a cheat code because it's like, wow, this one is totally a eSports kind of game and this other one's is very in-depth um, story game and both of them are really good. But I from a kind of go back to perspective i definitely like uh super hot i think yeah. that one just it just felt really good i it, i like that it was i mean it was it was similar to the pc one but it was a completely different experience which i thought was really cool like it wasn't like resident evil it's like yeah it's it's kind of like you could play it the same way either way which it's super impressive that they even were able to get it running in vr um on the playstation but there's something about like they, they went in and didn't actually change the game up and the, the kind of the feel and I mean it still felt like super hot but the just it felt right for the the controllers and it just had a really cool feel to it and it, it was something I wanted to keep coming back to just because yeah. I guess it's, it's maybe it's the run base nature of the game it's just like I can play a little bit cool I'm good and it's not it's, it's just like oh I'm gonna try it again or have a really good run of like four or five times so I, I get that gets my vote. Yeah, and I, I totally agree with you and Nathie on that as well. Like, it gets my vote as well. And, uh, you know, I know that we all have different opinions, but I think that's great in a way because uh, it's great to have different opinions uh, on things. But I sort of echo your reasoning behind it, and that's just the way it made me feel. Let it me just, just made me feel like a total badass. Let me just yeah. zoom in on, on Zim for a moment there because <laughs> I can <laughs> see the face of the yeah, I might have won. The, I might have lost the battle. I'm going to win the war. You just watch, guys. It's one million PlayStation players, and trust me, right. a chunk of those played played uh, Resident yeah. Evil. But yeah. I, I, you know me, I don't go for popular vote. I just no. think that's a characteristic that happens no. to be be there. And also, I don't think a lot of people played the DLC, um, which is what they're really missing out on. Yeah. So yeah. if you do have it and you haven't played the DLC, Audi, then uh, give it a shot because yeah. yeah. it's yeah. it's it's very very good quality. Yeah. And this brings me on to a really nice segue because if you if you don't have any of these headsets, now is the perfect time to buy a headset because Black Friday is coming. And we have got some amazing, amazing Black Friday VR deals coming very, very soon. So check this out, right? The Oculus Rift will be available with the Touch Bundle for $350 from Best Buy and Newegg. Uh, that's going to be available from the 23rd of November to the 25th. So if you're looking for a Rift, mm. that is a, an amazing deal. Uh, the HTC Vive is going to be an available for five nine nine, and that's with the deluxe audio strap and uh, Fallout Four, and that's going to be available from the twenty fourth to the twenty seventh of November. Then we've got uh, Windows Mixed Reality headsets. They're going to be running uh, a big sort of discount on Black Friday for their line of uh, headsets as well. There's going to be up to a hundred dollars off. 
Um, they're going to be available on the Microsoft Store, and that's going to be starting from the 23rd, running also to the 27th. Samsung. Also the Samsung one. So it doesn't ah. say exactly how much ah. it's going to be off, but it will ah. tell you. I'm going to send uh, it back. What is this? <laughs> so it, we don't know the exact uh, discount for each headset, but they just say up to 100 USD off uh, the, the range. So they're not specific about which uh, headset gets the most money off, but up to $100 off one of them um so that would be really nice and especially because like right now we literally found out just this week that now you don't have to wait till december to play steam vr on your windows mixed reality headset there is actually a, a way to to do it right now so uh they've they've brought it forward somehow i don't know how but they have uh and also uh i've i've read this week and saw a video on youtube of someone playing oculus titles using revive with the windows mixed reality platform as well so that kind of changes things up a little bit. So um, next level, there's like three stages of things you go through. Yeah, so, uh, you know, although like, you know, I think I've been clear on previous episodes, I'm not a massive fan of the Windows Mixed Reality platform. It's certainly making it look a little bit more attractive in a way, but I think there's still some big barriers to entry here. Um, but well, we'll there's see. one big barrier. You have been talking about that to me uh, like uh, last week that you said that not every game works with uh, the mixed reality headset when you are on Steam VR. Yeah, that's right. So um, I think it was Upload or uh, a similar, it might have been a Road to VR, I'm not quite sure which which uh, publication it was, but basically they said that uh, they tried Gorn, uh, they had access to the Steam VR library, they tried Gorn with the Windows Mixed Reality headset and it didn't work. And it wasn't clear whether that was the button mappings weren't uh, synced up to the controllers so they couldn't get it to work properly or whether the game just didn't work properly we just don't quite know that detail yet but it looks as though you have to implement Windows Mixed Reality sort of SDK in your game for it to be compatible on the Steam yeah. uh, store so that is another thing uh, you know we, we all assumed that Steam VR titles would work straight out of the box but we don't think that's the case now. Mm. I just so, saw a thread on Reddit today uh -huh. Mike talking exactly about that some of the lead developers talking about the fact that there are DLL libraries, I believe, that are associated yeah. with Windows MR uh, yeah. that are not supported in Unity builds, for instance. So yeah. like what you said there, um, it looks like there's a, a, a kind of a stark incompatibility yeah. Um, yeah. unless you are building strictly for that. And you have to kind of recode aspects of your game to be able to make it work. Yeah. So yeah. another barrier yeah. to entry. Yeah. But, um, but if you've been holding out for one, then, you know, if, you yeah. worry, if you're really desperate to get one, uh, then, you know, now's yeah, a good time to get one. Way. Yeah, um, sure. Also, PSVR has got some very nice deals. Uh, you know, deals this, 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 this is, well. yeah, this is a great deal. This is like uh, a PS4 one terabyte version and a PSVR headset for five hundred bucks. Like that is a pretty sweet deal. That is amazing. Um, that's the straight version, not the pro. That's the straight version, not the pro. Mm -hmm. So you're Small getting difference. You're getting vanilla PSVR and you're getting a, a yeah. PS4 with a one terabyte drive in it, but that's 500 bucks for like your straight full, into VR. A full VR setup, huh? A full VR yeah, yeah. setup. Yeah, then you're ready to go. Euros. Um, and it's but I, it gets I, even. It's probably it, better still than the Windows Mixed Reality yeah. ones. I mean, so it gets even better than that in a way. Definitely because, better. Uh, you've got the Skyrim bundle, so that comes out on the 17th of November. That's going to have uh, the PSVR, uh, a PlayStation. Um, so actually, no, I don't think this comes with a, a, a PlayStation. Actually, I think this is um, this is just the PSVR headset. Yeah. So it comes with a PSVR headset, a PlayStation camera, two Move controllers, Skyrim, uh, and that's four hundred and fifty dollars. So that's a pretty good deal if it's, you've already got a PS4. Uh, and then yeah, yeah. that's a great entry if you've got a PS4 or Pro. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah and then obviously if you want to hold on a little bit longer from the 1st of December, you'll be able to play that bundle, but with Doom VFR instead. So 449, but with Doom VFR is part of the bundle. So again, a very, very nice that's, deal. That's going to well. bring a lot of people in, a lot of people <laughs> yeah. into VR. Oh yeah. That's, 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 the, titles. That's, that's the kind of price that like kids spend on like, you know, a, a Christmas present or something. Eh? That's a perfectly normal mm. price. Uh, they, they, no, they see all those VR videos. They all want to play VR and this is the ideal <laughs> gift now. Eh? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Don't forget right. with the Vive and with the Oculus and the, well, some of the, of the other ones, you still need a, a full PC. Eh? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So again, some... like the place of VR is like a really appealing thing. You know, they got a nice box and kids love that. They are more attracted to like a, and, a console thing. It looks much cooler. Great games. You know, got all the lights. Great games. I gotta say another thing though about PlayStation VR as a platform. 
as a guy who runs the three headsets, right? I do Rift, Five, and PSVR. Mm -hmm. PSVR has one material valuable difference that I didn't realize joining the platform, but I've only learned it talking to devs. And that's that they set the bar really high uh, in terms of everything from loading scenes and all that, and having to hit the 90 frames a second. So what it means is if a title that I play on Rift or Vive is running a little bit choppy, I can be guaranteed that maybe slightly lower resolution, but it'll run like butter on, on the, the PSVR. PSVR. So there Indeed. are some titles where I say, actually, I want to do that on PSVR instead. So there might be an impression out there, there was that I had before I got one, that you know it wouldn't be as capable of VR headset. But I have to say, slight resolution differences aside, you're trading re resolution for field of view, really, mm -hmm. between the two, because it's got better field of view. It is a very capable you know, headset. And the only thing that I would say is if you're thinking, ooh, will I spend the extra, I don't know what it is, $50 to get a Pro, a PS4 Pro mm -hmm. to drive that? There's a lot of games out there, things like Thumper and that really good, bright, colorful games, high energy, high active action, that really leverage the additional resolution or graphical fidelity with the pro. So also, if you are thinking, hey, let me let me go into the VR space, then consider getting yourself a pro and not necessarily going cheap and cheerful. And also, I mean, yeah, resolution I mean, is one yeah. thing, but image clarity on the on the PlayStation VR is it's phenomenal. I find that if I, if I put my because I, I before the PSVR actually came out, I was doubting like, am I going to get this? And I got a chance to try one out, and I was just blown away by how how yeah. little of the screen door effect that you actually see because they use those like sub pixels. Yeah. It's it's really a great image that you get in that headset. I really have to, and indeed like yeah. resolution wise, it's it's less, but in terms of, of image clarity, it's it's. I find no, it as long as you have really, like the really sweet good. spot, that's the thing with the headset. Like you need to find the sweet spot, and yeah. then if you found it, then it's great, you know. Um, but to be honest with you, Zim, like I played with the casual PlayStation as well for a couple of months, then I switched to the Pro. Um, I did the same. Of course, like, uh, let's say if, if you got the extra money, do it. If you do not have the money or you're like, well, that's going to be tricky because I also need to spend other, like, my money on other stuff. And, as you know, it's, then it, it's not a huge difference. Not like... No, it's like a 20% uh, difference. It was yeah. originally like 10. Uh, and then they... Hybrid. And, yeah, more developers use the, the breathing performance but, in, in the yeah. Pro now. But let's say if you are new to VR and you try a PlayStation VR for the Great. first time, then you don't even, you know, you're not like, yeah, well, I could have gotten the Pro because it was sharper, <laughs> you know? Um, but yeah. yeah, I think this is an amazing deal for consumers, but also for Bethesda in the end, because they have been uh, having a great year, of course, because of all those titles like reinventing them in a way. Yeah. I, I still think that Skyrim might have some issues in a way. I mean, it's it's really surprising how they were able to get at working in VR. It's a very old game. You know, I mean, Doom has been built from the ground up for VR. So if I would pick one of the three, I would go for Doom and then Fallout and then Skyrim. I Like Skyrim is so old. It's such an old it's, game. It's funny, I it's know funny how... that you mentioned that because I, I ran a, a poll on my Twitter a couple of days ago to see like, you know, what like the general interest was. Uh, I got like about like maybe 200 votes or something and Skyrim came out on top with uh, 40% of people who, uh, who wanted yeah, to try it. Yeah, but that's, that's, that has not, not only to do with like they want to have like it's an open world and Doom isn't for example. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But it's also like Skyrim has a much bigger name than, than Doom. Let's say Doom for old school people is like, oh yeah, Doom. Ah. But when you get like new uh, uh, gamers, <laughs> it's like yeah, a fanboy. But in terms uh, of like bringing people in? Into into like the any kind of VR setup. It's Skyrim. It's, yeah. it's Skyrim. Yeah, it's Skyrim. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny because like, so are you saying anything from a performance perspective that you expect Skyrim might have some challenges on PSVR, or is it rather uh, it's a like total a game uh, experience? Uh, like like in VR, you don't want to notice any any like you know like render distance things and stuff like that. I have the feeling you will notice that it's just uh, playing around with like the graphics and stuff like that. Um, I mean, pl I played it um, at Gamescom, and uh, back then uh, they uh, turned off like the puzzles in the first dungeon. You were in a dungeon, first of all, you were not in the open world. So they were really playing on save back then. So, and that was like like a month or two ago. And everyone said like, yeah, but that's an old demo. Yeah, so if you got a new demo, you can also show it up, right? Um, but they do have walking logo, they do have teleportation. Um, so that's really nice. It's just that, I don't know, we will see what it's gonna bring, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, like Bethesda is known for making very nice open world games and there are always funny bugs where you're stuck on a horse 
on like the top of a mountain, you know? Yeah. But it's quite <laughs> Things of it. like that. That's part of it. Yeah. Yeah. With Fallout where you're like, yeah, I, I, I almost got the boss and then you're suddenly getting stuck because of a bug, you know? But I, I, uh, do, really, we'll I do really applaud Bethesda for uh, bringing a title as challenging oh, yeah. as, as Skyrim to a, to a completely new platform. What they, I mean, they're doing yeah. it to multiple platforms, actually. They're also bringing it to, uh, to the Switch, uh, the Nintendo Switch. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, and Doom a lot well. of that actually, don't we? So like Ellie Noir, right? There's another one that was delayed, but um, the titles that are developed for the Switch and developed for VR, it's almost like yeah. they're like, yeah, oh, exactly. we're going to do that platform, we're going to do this one as well. It just seems they seem to be going hand in hand, yeah. which uh, yeah. makes me want even more. There was a there was a graphic that circulated on the internet about four months ago, which showed a headset that would snap in the Switch, and my God, that excited yeah. me because yeah. again, we talked about. <laughs> The, I mean, the Switch is, is just such a driving force, and I don't think we've talked about it too much here, but uh, we love the Switch in my household, and it is something that if they could do a VR headset with that, I think it would do very good things for the VR market. Yeah, no, I totally agree. I'm a massive fan of the Switch as well. Um, but yeah, so that uh, they are your Black Friday deals. You know, if you're going to yeah. buy a VR and you want to get into VR right now, mm -hmm. now is the best time to get a VR headset, whether it be the Windows Mixed Reality one, the PSVR, the Rift, or the or the Vive. You know, they're all great headsets in their own right. So you know, just choose which one you want and go for it. But moving on now, obviously, to why our special guest is here, John Pearl from Gunfire Games. We're going to be talking about Gunfire Games and from Other Sons. So, John, uh, Gunfire Games, obviously, they're no stranger to VR titles. This is going to be your third title now, is, is that right? Uh, fifth, actually. Fifth title, wow. Yeah. Okay, so this is your, <laughs> you're, you're like VR veterans in the space when it comes to developing VR games, because I don't know any other developers that have made so many games for VR. So, uh, how did uh, how did sort of Gunfire get into the VR space, and what kind of pushed you in, in that direction from the beginning? Well, um, I don't know if uh, many people know our history, but we a lot of us came from uh, Vigil Games, uh, where we worked on Dark Siders One and Two, um, and from there we were owned by THQ. THQ went out of uh, out of business. Um, we were closed down, and uh, Crytek uh, kind of swooped in and, and brought in a group of us to make Crytek USA. They went through some financial problems and we just kind of said, all right, let's just be masters of our own fate kind of thing and, and just decided to start up Gunfire Games. Um, and from the time when we were at Vigil, uh, Jason Rubin was uh, the, uh, like, he came in at the end of THQ to try to salvage the ship at that point. And he, uh, he, was, the, he was the president of THQ, um, but obviously now he's at Oculus. So he kind of reached out to us um, and said, hey, you want to come? come out to the Oculus office and check out what we're doing. And, and at that point, we didn't really have a solid plan to do with, uh, you know, we just knew like, hey, you know what, let's let's make our own fate. Um, so we kind of went out there and I personally was really blown away. I know the other guys were really impressed too. I, they showed us um, like a, a single two rooms, I think it was from uh, Hero Round, which it was called, uh, oh, I forget, a VR adventure at the time. Right. <laughs> um, and it was, it was for the Gear VR and I was just, at that point, I'd only seen uh, the uh, the original like Kickstarter Oculus and just kind of all the, the weird like Half Life hacks to make it work, and I was just kind of like, uh, so this is kind of weird. It's kind of making me. Um, but then just seeing that was just amazing, like just being able to like look around in this room and it was like, hey, look, looks just like Zelda, but it's it looks like it's really there. Yeah. So I think that just got us really excited um, and kind of got our foot in the door with with them. Um, so yeah, we did. Uh, what was it? Hero Bound uh, for Steps, then Spirit Champion for the uh, gear as well, and then we also did a version of it for the Rift launch. Then we did Chronos, and then uh, worked with the Oculus uh, directly to do uh, Dead and Buried, and then obviously now from Other Sons. Yeah, yeah. So like, I, I've played uh, Chronos, I've played Dead and Buried, and I've obviously played from Other Sons as well. Um, so, so when it came to obviously the very beginning, like breaking you know, off and becoming your own studio, that must have been quite a scary thing for you guys. Was it quite scary at the time or did it feel quite natural and quite comfortable, the right thing to do, or were you a bit unsure at the time? It was it was a little of all that. It was uh, it was kind of like, well, we keep ending up in like this other, like I kind of said, our, our own fate. Like we were kind of at the whim of whatever the parent company was doing to us at the time or what they were doing with their mm -hmm. other business ventures. like. Darksiders 2 sold really well, but THQ bet really bad on the, the Udraw platform. Um, so they lost a ton of money there. So it's kind of like, well, we can give it our own stab because we a lot of us have been working together since you know Darksiders 1. So um, I've worked with this group for over 10 years, almost 11 
I think now year. So it's like, we kind of, we got a good like core team um, going here. So we're like, Hey, we can, we can make this happen. We know how to make games. So, mm-hmm. but yeah, it was, at first it's like, well, okay, we're not going to get paid for a little bit until we get something signed. So let's hustle. Let's get something signed. So luckily, you know, it worked out timing well with Oculus because they were kind of ramping into the the whole development thing of yeah. like, Hey, we want to find games for this, you know, platform. This is, this is our big, our big thing now. Yeah. Um, so that, that just, I think it was just timing worked out really well. Yeah, definitely. And I think, you know, like um, Kronos definitely was like one of the must have titles when the Rift first came out because mm-hmm. there wasn't a massive library of games, but it was one of the standout ones that was like it had a lot of length. You know, there was a long game, you know, you could really sink some hours into it. And then uh, obviously when Dead and Buried came out with the touch controllers, that was really good timing as well. Like you say, it was like a really fun multiplayer game. You know, like uh, Zim said earlier, you, the, the, the quick draw mode was uh, like a ton of fun playing with people online. And now, obviously, you've got uh, from other sons coming, you know, that is out now, and uh, again feels kind of like this epic adventure that you can kind of embark on with your friends. So, how did uh, how did the sort of concept from other sons come about, and what sort of made the team sort of choose that as a as a title that they wanted to work on, like a co op experience, uh, you know, sailing through the stars and and finding your own adventure? Yeah, I, I think it's like the just kind of natural fit. It felt like for VR to to do something that's kind of this big open universe people want because we you know we read Reddit, we read the the posts, and we kind of could see where what people were wanting. A lot of it at the time was like even like at the time like of Chronos, it, it's yeah, you said it's it's meant to be like a longer story, a longer game, longer sessions. Um, but a lot of games that were coming out were more like super quick session based, which is totally cool. But it definitely seemed like people wanted a bigger chunk of content. Um, that they could kind of come back to or a place that they could come back to and feel like they're doing a lot of stuff. And and it's really like, I guess it's partially, you know, the there's like this move of like the, the you know, Facebook owning um, or being Oculus basically is, you know, they're a social platform. It's like, hey, Oculus is ramping up this, this big social um, like platform with the voice over IP, um, the matchmaking stuff, they're kind of ramping that stuff up. So it's just, it, again, it, it was timing. It's like, hey, you know what? Let's, why not a co op game? Because co op and VR is awesome. Um, yeah. And we really, we really found that from even the simple stuff in like Dead and Buried when you're sitting around the card table and you're giving each other high fives, you're throwing cards at each other, you're like that, that kind of thing, just that quick, like just moment to moment of like, I'm here, you're there, we're talking, and it's yeah. just, nothing's going on there's that cool moment so it's like yeah we got to make it co-op it's Um, like everything becomes more fun in vr everything you try yeah (laughs) exactly yeah it's like hey you got other people here to to experience it with you it's really cool yeah um yeah yeah like uh, i have to say like i'm not a massive like competitive multiplayer guy but I really, really enjoy uh, co-op games, you know. So when Star Trek Bridge View came out, like I, I really enjoyed that. But you know, it, I definitely felt the limitations of the game because I wanted to go on these adventures with these people. You know, I didn't just want to pilot the ship with them. So that's kind of where From Other Suns takes over, and you can kind of explore other ships and you know get on that teleporter and teleport to another station, you know, with your buddies. And that was really, really nice. Um, so in terms of like. Um, the, the, the co-op nature of the game, like did you sort of take a lot of cues from Star Trek Bridge Crew or was that something that you sort of uh, enjoyed as a team? Like, or, or was this like in development way before that game was even released? Yeah, it was, we were well into development on um, From Other Sons before that was even mentioned or even announced. <laughs> right. And it was funny because the original pitch for it was very much like a, the safe, like kind of like Kronos, like the one of the biggest uh, like pillars of making that game was we want to make a game that everyone who has a VR headset can play. There's not like, oh, well, you could play it, but you're going to get sick, that kind of thing. We wanted to make it. That's why we went with the camera mode that we did. Um, and it kind of like also helped sell the world and really put you in the world still. Um, but it was like a very, from a from a motion sickness or VR sickness standpoint, it was a very safe game. So we kind of were tr- like the same thing with... Um, with a dead and buried, it was it was meant to be very much like hey, it's stationary. You can stand up, you can duck, but it's like you're not moving around. So again, we wanted to go kind of safe at, at first, and we were very much making a, a bridge crew type game. And it was just like it just wasn't clicking internally. We we're just like, yeah, it's cool. Yeah, hey, what's going on sitting over there? Hey, what's going on? You're waving to the people, but just like being this in this stationary thing um, was really weird to us. And so I think it was like our, our presence, like, hey, check out what I just did, and he just put it. He he like hooked in uh, locomotion and it was like oh my god this is this is the game we want to make yeah away missions that's where it's at you, you don't want to just sit on a on a ship and and just wave at each other you want to go out and start doing stuff and and then it became a very different thing and it was funny because 
we were in that state like of, of hey, we're going to do full locomotion and we'll come up with what we ca- end up calling comfort mode in the end. So people can still play it if they're not, if they don't have their full VR legs. Um, and we were months into that new one. And then they announced Bridge Crew. And we're like, whew, glad we changed it. <laughs> we don't want to come on. <laughs> yeah. Because because it, it was came out, I think, eight months before we ended up shipping. So it's like, man, yeah. it really, really bad. Like, here's the same boy eight months later. Yeah. So, yeah. But no, I, I, I admire you for, for doing that, that full locomotion thing and having that that mode where you can just walk around freely because I think that is something that now as as people that have been on yeah, in awesome. VR for a long time is what they're, they're really asking for, you know, and uh, just to have the option, you know, it, it is just brilliant. You know, people are now asking for Onward on the Oculus platform as well and you've got Killing Floor Incursion that did the same as well, like Im- implemented both uh, forms of locomotion yeah. and I think that is, is what people are crying out for right now is free locomotion and I, I'm someone that actually gets susceptible to it sometimes uh, in some games but you know, in, in uh, from Other Sons it's a very, very comfortable game to play in, in free locomotion, I find. The, the thing the is, I was going to say is John, people might not know what camera mode you're talking about, so I think you're talking about the the third person ghost yeah. where your character uh, kind of moves to a location. Can you describe that? What that what's yeah. that called internally as well? Uh, we we just call it comfort mode internally. But basically, what it is is you're stationary. You're first person. You can shoot. You're you're you basically have all the functionality of uh, full locomotion. But as soon as you push forward on the left stick to move, uh, your character kind of that you are kind of sh- pops out in front of you, and you can control them out in front of you a lot like Kronos. Um, and then as soon as you let go of the stick. Uh, the the camera pops to that location, so it's a it's a very like quick snap. There's not a smooth transition because we found that made people sick too. So it's, it's very much intended to be this this mode where it's like, hey, you know what? It's not the most ideal way to play, but it's totally fun, totally legitimate way to play. So um, yeah. that, that's, that was early on. Interesting we, that you said that it was um, kind of uh, to to some extent kind of Chronos like because I had a question for you related to. Dead and Buried, which was, did the gunplay happen to come from Dead and Buried? Because I didn't know the connection between the two and that there was gunfire at the middle before. But I've got to say, they feel very similar. Yeah, I mean, we took a lot. What we learned, like the, we really like the reload action, because um, it was, it was one of those things of, we even simplified it even more, because in Dead and Buried, it was mostly like flick down and flick back up. But man, like you play some long sessions, you're going to feel it right here in the wrists. <laughs> So we wanted to make something a little bit more simple um, than that. So it is kind of just a flick down or a flick up. So um, it, it's because we found that you reload a lot in uh, in from other suns. Uh, I actually wonder, like, can you? I, I'm sure you guys have some stats on that, but like, how big is the uh, player base that really uses like the walking locomotion compared to the people that go for the comfort mode, like? Do you have the feeling that there is a big audience right now for walking locomotion for like really like a, a thumbstick um, running around? It seems like it. I mean, it's it's really a lot of it's uh, anecdotal till we get some of the like analysis uh, stats back because it seems like we hear a lot of people like, oh, we love the full locomotion. Um, but then every press event that we've done, most people choose comfort. So it's 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 kind of strange where it's like maybe they're just like, hey, I don't want to even chance it. Uh, to get sick, but uh, it's definitely, it seems like that's, I don't know, I don't want to say it's a 50-50 split, but there's definitely, I think both are valid. Um, and we even had, after we did our open beta, we mm-hmm. added like three more move type of options. One's like um, like forward on the stick, which we call like seated mode. So it's like you can do push forward and, what, and you start going forward, but you can still look around because yeah. uh, the default locomotion is, we found the safest, mm-hmm. was push forward and it's wherever you're looking will automatically start adjusting and tweening towards the direction you're going. Um, we also do basically wherever your controller's pointing will, like whatever forward is, which that way, uh, which is similar to onward, um, mm-hmm. we have that as well. The, the first yeah. thing that I and do then, in, in any title that I that I start is turn off all of the comfort features. <laughs> like I, I absolutely <laughs> don't like that. Nope. I Sometimes I even get the feeling that the, they like uh, make me more sick. Um, I, I really don't like comfort features and I, I actually prefer just, you know, the regular ones. But I guess I'm just like one of those like weird folks. Mm. I also, because we were talking about co-op games, um, I love playing co-op games with like friends of mine. You know, like, you know, the people that are online now. But I absolutely despise playing with other people. Like, I mean, I'm just, maybe I'm just like weird like that. I absolutely despise other people. Uh, <laughs> 
so um, yeah, I mean, I feel privileged. <laughs> well, we have. I mean, at least the VR chat is fun, right? I mean, uh, yeah, I'm of course, saying. of course. But the, the, <laughs> that, I find that I find that something interesting that you said, like, oh, you know, there was a lot of like. Uh, question for like uh, co-op games because I always get the impression that there's like a lot of people asking for like you know solid single player experiences is there a, is there a reason why you say like ah oh, I, I I really I mean of course I understand when you say like co-op is like cool because you can like interact with each other but is there really already like a, a player base in virtual reality to have like people who don't have VR friends to be you know joining in game together yeah, I think like uh, I mean that was a big thing from us that we did learn from uh, from Dead and Buried. I think it's basically it's, it's because the VR market's so small that the people that do want to play the co-op or even the the PvP aspects of it, uh, it just starts to shrink when the next big game comes out. So um, that's why we made uh, from Other Suns completely like it's focused to be scalable. Like one person can. That's how I always play personally. I play single player. Um, you hate people too. And then, but, <laughs> I don't want people killing my dudes on my ship. I can't have that. Um, but yeah, so it's it's definitely like because we wanted to make it so it's like because I, I know as as games come and go, like the online communities, uh, will, you know, kind of they ebb back and forth between like, hey, there's a big flux in, and then it starts to fall off. So that's why we definitely wanted to make it where it's like, hey, it's yeah. it's totally playable. Single player, two player, or three player, and it all I scales. Think, I think that's a great kind of choice. Scales. I think that's a great choice that you like keep that in mind. That there's uh, people, weird people like me that like uh, don't like to play with other people sometimes. <laughs> Doesn't play well with others. <laughs> but how, how how is that for you guys? Because I mean, you worked on Dead and Buried. I really enjoyed that game, but after a while, it became well, kind of like a ghost town. You know, people leave that game and they go to the next one. How is it for you guys? Because I mean, you make a very nice game. You really spend a lot of time on it. Maybe you got some DLCs ready to go as well. But then after a while, you see like, yeah, well, I'm not sure how many people still check this out in a way. Like, how is it for you guys? Because it's it seems to be normal in the VR uh, industry right now that it happens. But it's kind of strange as well, because some games are like, hmm, maybe I should play that after a year. But then it's almost impossible to play. So if you want to experience a multiplayer, you need to do it in the first few weeks, because then it's over, you know. And with you guys, you have, of course, a longer lifespan with uh, being in the box with the Rift, of course. but. How is that for you guys, in a way? Yeah, we definitely found that um, that it, it, it did teeter off as I don't know which I can't remember which release it was, and I'm not blaming them. It's just like, hey, people want to jump to the next big, you know, multiplayer game. Um, so that was again that really informed a lot of the decisions with uh, from other sons because we ended up having to go back and patch in um, basically like the horde mode uh, is is one of the modes we primarily focused on, which was. At the time, like a novel thing, because there wasn't a lot of them. Now that's pretty much every game now, it seems like has a horde mode. Um, yeah. But it, it was that thing of like it required four people, and it was like can't find four people, you can't play. I think we actually had it down; to, it could be three or four. But then we eventually made it where you could be single player. Um, and then the other thing that we found too was early on, it was you had I think we shipped this way was that you basically like I want to play shootout or I want to play this or I want to play a specific mode and obviously like you already have a smaller player base because it's VR but then all of a sudden for a single game you're you're even compartmentalizing the people playing the game it's like oh well here's all your shootout people over here here's your horde people here and they're both waiting for games so we ended up making like a unified queue and it just kind of would rotate through and you would, it would right. let you kind of like you kind of get a sampling that way. Again, it's not the most ideal way. That's why there's like one way to play from other suns. It's like you get in and you try to get to Earth kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but from there, it's 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 the other thing too is that like you can play at any point. Like I want to play single player. And, oh, my buddy just came online. Invite him in. So that was another yeah. big thing because in uh, like Dead and Buried, it, it required everybody to be there at the start. Like so, it, it's waiting for people to start uh, or to join the game to start. So there's nothing to do. Um, so it's definitely like you could play for an hour and a half by yourself and your buddy comes online, they jump right in your game. It's just seamless. Um, they're one of your crew members now. Um, and then you just go from there. So that was a lot of that stuff. And knowing that like that there's, there's the people that play with a group of friends and only the group of friends, um, like you, <laughs> Roddy, for example. And then there's the people that are, Hey, I'm just going to jump in with whatever, or I just want to play mm -hmm. single player. It's like, we wanted to make a valid experience for all of those player types. Mm -hmm. Actually, yeah. John, the um, the point you just mentioned about so I I used to run a gaming community and and I found all my members online through different games, whatever it was, and so having a conduit to meet people is a really important thing to me, like hugely important. It's the reason I game as social gaming experiences. As I said, I met my wife that way. So 
you know, I, I, like I ran, I used to run across people like playing DayZ, for instance, and I'd meet a person and we'd be running along together. And then that guy gets shot and I'd be like, damn, that was a friend. And now I can't have that friend because I never took his details. Uh, from other sons is a little bit like that. You got the drop in, you're like, and you're just crude with somebody. If you're de reliant or dependent on them, uh, that's a really important part. And there's not that many games who do it well. But I found that was one of my first attractions when I was playing the open beta was just this kind of like drop in feature of you can just make buddies with anybody. So I really like that. So one, one question I've got about that, because, uh, you know, say someone jumps into the game and you get to a certain point. Um, and I suppose we should sort of warn that there might be some spoilers ahead. So I'll put that warning out there now. So, you know, uh, I'll keep some of this as generic as I can. But say if you unlock something and it's my game and, and, and Zim jumps in and then we unlock it together, do we both unlock that item or is it just the person that hosts the game as such? So um, that was a big thing, uh, especially because um, we wanted to figure out a way. It was it, there was a lot of internal discussion. There was a trying to figure out like what's the right way to to get like because we wanted to have unlocks and we wanted progression, um, but because there's not like a stat you don't have a static character like the whole again for the people that don't know like the game is very much an FTL uh, mixed with like Borderlands or Destiny um, where it's 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 meant to be a punishing. Um, and difficult and you should kind of eke out an existence in it um, and so you're going to die a lot and we didn't want to upfront put a lot of people like I'm going to go spend 20 minutes in the character creator and then play the game and die 10 minutes later but yeah so it was it's so what we have is everything tied to the Oculus achievements um, and so most of the stuff is is tied to amount of kills um, like, hey, or missions completed. So, like, one of the early uh, factions you meet are these uh, these pirates, and if you, I think it's a couple hundred and um, one hundred and fifty. I think unlock. is the first milestone. Is that the first one? Okay, so it's like one hundred and three hundred. Yeah, and then you you kill that many pirates, and you unlock uh, you unlock a legendary when you're hosting, and it's only when you're hosting because um, there wasn't really a good way around that. Because like, let's say I'm I'm playing and my buddy's playing. And I have a level two, and he has a level three, and they're the same kind of gun. Do they both spawn? It gets kind of weird because every gun has its own slot in the captain's room. Um, yeah. So, but there, there is the shared achievement idea. So, if you're in a game and somebody's off shooting pirates, and you're just goofing around on the ship, you're still getting credit for it. Um, they might have, you know, had 149, and they killed that 150, and you're like two. You're gonna get. You're gonna be three. You know, kill pirate kills, but. You're not going to both get the gun, but the gun will show up on the ship, and you can fight over it. That's why the gun appeared. I couldn't figure that out because we, <laughs> we 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 got a a certain item that dropped off of a character that was gold in color, and we put it somewhere, and it's still sitting on my someplace. And um, yes. aside from that, the gun appeared, and I wasn't sure. I was like, "Is this a bug?" Because I guess that's an unlock. Yeah, but th th this is the funny thing because cool. when when we we played Zim, uh, I, I, there was a section where me and Panda were off on a mission somewhere, and I think you were on the ship because you were the last human remaining. And for those that don't know or haven't played the game, like if you die with the three man team, like you respawn as a robot, right? So you can die as many times as a robot. That's absolutely fine. But the last remaining human, that becomes your priority to protect them at all costs. Because as soon as they die, then it's game over. So <laughs> Zim was back on our ship, like just like tooling around while me and Panda were off on an adventure together. And Zim was going through the captain's log and he was reading through all these like achievements and what you had to do. And a, a lot of people may not know this, but that's kind of where all the information is as to what <laughs> you need to do to, to unlock these items. Is that right, John? Yeah, pretty much. Like yeah. I, we're big fans of like, the, the kind of Dark Souls high level game mentality of like it's it should be in the world. We don't want to beat people over the head. We like our goal like when we made the like the tutorial, which is a little long, but I think it, it needs to be to get like all the systems. Like we didn't want to say because we had people even internally like I don't think this is a spoiler, but you can teleport over to a pirate ship if you want. And they're like, you need to put that in the tutorial. People need to know that. And it's like, well, do they? Because mm -hmm. isn't that more fun to discover that yourself in gameplay? So there's a lot What's of stuff like tutorial, John. I don't remember that, it. I don't remember that being the tutorial. And no, I'm saying it's not. It's we not, we right? had discussions internally. People were like, it should be in there. If you can do it in game, it should be in the tutorial. No. It's like it's the you know, I, and obviously like uh, that was the right decision. I had yeah. that moment where we found out. And I was like, holy shit, that is amazing. We can actually go over there and take their stuff. Yeah. It's one of the yeah, best parts so, of the game. Like it really, we wanted to keep like the tutorial functionality, like just to be functional. Like here's how you reload your gun. Here's here's what this how you use a stim pack like the the 
I guess the, the nitty gritty of the, how you do the things with the touch, because a lot of that stuff isn't intuitive, but then there's a lot of cool things that you can do where it's like, you mess around, you're like, I can do this. That's cool. Like we had a lot of those moments, even internally with people that weren't like super close to the design of the game. Like the artists that were working on the game, they're like, Hey, I just did this. I think it's broken. I'm like, no, you figured that out. And they're like, oh my God, that's amazing. I can't believe we can do that. Yeah. Uh, Cause I don't want to give spoilers. So I won't get real specific, but there's a lot of those moments I think for people. Um, yeah. And then, but then it's like, Sorry, oh, real, real um, quick, I just want to say like, so like even the tutorial, like the, uh, or the achievement stuff, it's like, it's on a disc. So it's a physical item. You have to actually manually put it in there and you scroll through it. Um, there's also like basically a codex for all the enemies you encounter and you can find a little bit about their history there. Um, and then there's also a ship manual, which goes into more description of how the systems work. So it's definitely, we wanted all that stuff to be much more in world. Like, so it's, and it's also, so I don't think anybody wants to sit there in VR and just be talked to for like 30 minutes of like, this is how the ship works, <laughs> but the information's there. Yeah. So like people that really want to get into it, Talk really about, understand it. That's there. Talking about the tutorial, uh, my first impression of, uh, of, uh, of the game was actually from uh, watching a uh, Zim's uh, channel. Like he, uh, he did a stream of it, uh, of the tutorial mm -hmm. and he started off and just to give like an idea of how hard the game can be, uh, <laughs> he's already ducking there. He died uh, in the tutorial. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he died in the tutorial? He <laughs> died in the tutorial. The, the, the one enemy they sent you, I couldn't figure out how to shoot. GG, man. GG. <laughs> what the heck? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's really funny. I didn't know that. Thanks, yeah. Rowdy. Just exposed. No, him. you're welcome. You're <laughs> yeah. welcome, buddy. Is that that actually should, that shouldn't have been possible. <laughs> what? Oh, uh, well, I'm a special that way, John. He's got really low health and does really low damage. We're like, surely no one will ever die to this guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Achievement so, unlocked. So one of the, <laughs> the question I had was, I always ask this to developers who've just released a product because it's, um, it's a really fun question to ask. What bug from the development cycle stands out to you as something that we'll never get to see or maybe don't know about or maybe even turned into a feature, but... Um, I'm kind of more interested in the ones that we don't know about, bugs that were squashed that were kind of fun for a bit of time and uh, didn't make it to the final cut. Um, well, there's actually, it wasn't a bug as much as it was kind of sort of a feature we didn't really fully think out, and it's probably one of my favorites, was um, uh, so we actually, um, you could take other people's weapons. So you could like pull the weapon off of them um, at any point. So you could somebody could be going to a mission and on the teleport and like, all right, I'm gonna go. And then you just like reach over and just pull the guns away and then they're just they're basically naked on the mission. I'm definitely gonna uh, do that now. But I mean that we cut that one because that was really frustrating and really trolly. So we just had to cut but that was one of those features where it's like we didn't really think of the full like ramifications of it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, until we like we started playing, we're like, this isn't awful. This is impossible. <laughs> this is so frustrating. But I think that's one of those learning curve elements. I used to see it. Uh, well, just in the curve from coming like from the early DK one, DK two days, I've seen more VR titles do it, and I think it's really important. I give feedback, critical feedback to VR devs, and one of the things I say to them is consider horseplay as a really important component to your game. Now, I think you're right. You've got to do it, and you've got to meter it, right? You can't just have it wreck your game experience. But being able to kind of about is actually half of the fun of VR. Like like any anyone oh, no. who goes into a VR room, what's the first thing you do? You grab all the items on the desk and chuck them all about the place or burn the curtains or whatever. You just <laughs> right. do what you can't do in real life. Uh, yeah. But I think that's a it, that's a fun one to hear about. So thanks for that. <laughs> and I guess another thing too is we'd 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 get bugs for this, which was funny. Um, where like you can you can go onto a station, get a key card that will open a door, but then you could throw that key card away like down one of the pits and you just can't get through that door if you don't have a hackathon. <laughs> so it's like, they're like, this is a bug you need to fix. And it's like, no, there's consequences to actions. That's one of the coolest things about VR. It's like, you're really there. Would you do that in real life? <laughs> it, it, it never actually gates you from like not being able to, like you're not stuck. You just, well, can't complete that mission. I guess I'll jump back on my ship and go somewhere else. Yeah. So it was, that was definitely one of those funny things of like, we keep getting that kickback is like, hey, this is a bug. It's like, Working as yeah. intended. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, is, is there any um, Easter eggs that you can kind of share, like something that again, sort of, is kind of maybe tucked away, uh, you know, that that you could just discover maybe, and and it's kind of like a little Easter egg in the game that maybe refers to another game that you've developed or something else. Uh, there's quite a few things like that. Um, they're pretty hard to find. Um, so they're the best. Uh, I, I can give a little hint. The best thing to do is check out um, like Dead End. Uh, security rooms are the most likely place for those. 
Okay. Yeah. Um, but there's there's some there's some stuff that's referential to the previous work. Yes, definitely. <laughs> okay. Cool. Cool. And there was another thing, like you you said about. Um, uh, teleporting onto enemy ships um, while you're sort of in negotiations and then kind of like robbing them blind. We we had uh, we had occasions where we did that quite a lot. But what we'd find is that when we teleported across, the crew on the other ship wouldn't even notice the fact that we were there. So we could kind of steal all their guns <laughs> and they would just be walking around doing their business. And we're like, yeah, we're stealing all your stuff. But they wouldn't actually retaliate in any way. Is that Was that something that was planned or is that something that you're going to patch out in future or what's your so plan was, I guess like it was it a pirate ship or a merchant ship because merchants aren't don't go aggressive unless you try to steal their stuff or shoot them um they're uh, kind of like whatever it's our guns but pirates should definitely oh right I think it was pirates after. actually um we, we we had that with because we even went to the captain's room and and Zim was pushing him around <laughs> the captain and I, I was I was telling the captain oh we're stealing all your stuff dude like what are you can do about it and he didn't do anything about it uh, so it's interesting. I I, I, I wasn't quite sure times. like what the deal was yeah. with that. That should be that might might have been a merchant because pirates are very, like pirate captains especially are very aggressive. They'll, okay. They'll turn and start shooting you because yeah like uh, hey they're merchants they just they just want to make a buck they're like hey maybe you'll still buy something from me so they they won't turn aggressive unless you either fire on their ship shoot mm -hmm. one of them because I was right. watching one of we were all watching one of um, Zim's early uh, beta videos and there was the one where I think a bunch of you uh, a bunch of you guys grabbed all the guns. And there was there was the characters with the shields, and yes. uh, and then we're like, oh my gosh, they're gonna shoot them, aren't they? They're gonna shoot them, and everybody's just like holding their breath. And then somebody shot them, and then they all went aggro. Yeah, because they won't go like you can take their guns. They're like, yeah, whatever. But as soon as you go and try to do an aggressive move against them, they would definitely turn on right. you. Right, right, right. But we did find a few, Mike. I think you're right. There, there's a few times we saw guys even in shields where, and I think it is a, probably a bug because you'd shoot one of them. Right, and you go to another room, and the other guy's just kind of standing there, and you'd be pushing huh. him around or shooting him or whatever. And mm. sometimes they wouldn't even react at all, and you're shooting the guy. Like, well, we'll definitely that kind of stuff. That so, yeah. I think there's a few things in there. I mean, there's a few crash to desktop bugs at the moment, but it's early days, and um, generally the the support is great. And I have to say, I, I tried it out for science. I tried touch controls. You, you know, I've clocked probably 20 hours in touch, and I tried revive, and I tried the Vive controllers, and I was like. This is just like people ask me that from the Vive community. They're like, "Should I buy the game and play Revive and do it that way?" My react recommendation to them was was actually don't bother. Like wait or buy a Rift or something because the touchpad controls. I don't expect you to comment on it, uh, but it's just it was no, of no fun to me at all. I had to actually go back to the Rift because the it's having a physical surprising. analog controller is really a positive experience. I mean, being able to jump in and out of corners and stuff and do anything but that. Was very frustrating. It's playable um, though. I mean, I I did it. I I played it with, uh, yeah. with Revive. Uh, I also like the first time of, I played the game. Yeah. I I hadn't even tried it with my Rift yet, but I had no problems with it. But it depends. Like if you play a lot with Revive, you know that you always need to hit like certain uh, middle parts of your touchpad. Mm -hmm. But yeah, let's say it's pretty tricky. But in the end, like um, I played it with my my Rift. And what I really like about the game, and this this is nothing to do with the gameplay itself. I really like the characters. Like, I really have the feeling that we have, like, a personal kind of uh, thing going on where, um, like, random people, they're, like, they really stare into my eyes. I'm like, okay, uh, hello. <laughs> uh, what do you want from me? You know, you want to be friends? You know, so it really starts to get, like, it, it's it's comedy from the start in a way where I'm like, hey, uh, who are you? Uh, let's, let's talk and maybe do something together. I mean, yeah, the first time I played it, they blew up the ship and I didn't even have a chance to, like, uh, do something about That's it. That's why I hate but, playing with other people. <laughs> yeah. uh, I mean, sometimes it depends. I mean, it can be so, like, that's that's classic gaming, right? You have, like, a Russian guy who doesn't speak English and then you got someone that doesn't have a microphone, even that there is a microphone on the Rift, but okay. Um, and then you get like a mix of, of people, so that can be very challenging, of course, but it can be very funny too, you know, where everyone wants to go everywhere. Well, with friends, it's more like a controlled thing, you know, even mm -hmm. if you troll around as well. So I think with random people, it also works. Of course, you're not gonna like gonna get like that far in a way, mm -hmm. but it depends. Sometimes you meet like a, an all star team, right? Yeah. So it sometimes happens where you're like, Wow, I have never played with these people before. This is great, you know. Mm. So yeah, yeah, well done. I mean, the the, the characters, I really like them.
Uh, yeah. Really nice. Yeah. So there's, a, there's I've got some questions from the community because obviously this uh, isn't live, so we don't have our normal live chat audience to ask us questions. But I asked uh, some people in the Oculus Reddit and the Vive Reddit uh, to ask some questions for you guys. So they've got uh, some questions for you. But there's just a couple more that I want to ask myself before I move on to their questions. And that is um, from Other Sons is um, a bit of an unusual name. And I, I understand I've heard a rumor uh, that that wasn't the original name that you come up with. Is that right? Yeah, that wasn't that, the one we wanted to go with originally. <laughs> so can you can you share that with us, or is that a top secret? I think so. I'm trying to think if it ever came out. Uh, I don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> but it was it was basically a name uh, very similar, but it was um, it was uh, another VR app came out right. prior to to that, and we had to change it. But mm -hmm. we had the we everything internally is. FOS uh, in terms of our code base and our editor and everything is always referred to as FOS. So yeah. it, we were just like racking our brains, like, oh, what do we want to call it? What do we want to call it? We went some really weird ways. Yeah. Um, and it was like, actually, it was funny because we had the, it was the, um, the uh, announcement trailer was coming out and it was literally the day before. And we're like, how about this? And we're like, oh, cool, from Other Sons. If it's FOS, that's cool. We don't have to change any code or any, <laughs> any other <laughs> systems to know what yeah. the heck we're talking about now. Yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, most games go through code names, but we had a pretty pretty early on, we had a we had a name we thought we were going to go with for sure. But that's well, how it is. Always yeah, what was, the, was the previous name cooler than this one? Or <laughs> like uh, It was different. It, it, I think it was probably cooler, but uh, from Other Sons started to, to grab me, especially with the, the storyline. I think it yeah. fits. Yeah. Like the idea of the, the jump drive at the beginning and you're going somewhere else and yeah. Yeah. these yeah. guys follow you back and they're from other sons. You know, they're yeah. not, not familiar sure. sons. It's about the ones that didn't make the cut, actually, that were that were discussed that were just awful. It wasn't like uh, flowers uh, or <laughs> skeletons or something <laughs> horrible like that. Was yeah, it? they were just like kind of just like almost generic space stuff and they just yeah. didn't have any personality. So well, we definitely wanted to have some personality wise. What I'll do is I'll ask the uh, the viewers when they do actually live stream this to put their suggestions in the comments <laughs> and then uh, <laughs> we, can, we can see which one the funniest they come up with because uh, I'm sure they'll have some hilarious ones they always do. Um, so then I've got one more um, sort of question before we move on to the community questions. And this is a bit spoilery, just uh, if, if you're listening or watching the show. So there is a, a battle with the archivist, um, which is kind of like a GLaDOS type character. And um, like the first time I encountered this character, like I, I was on my own and I got absolutely murdered and completely destroyed by it. And then I came in again and discovered it with a team and we finally like took it out. And I was just like, oh, this is amazing. We finally beat the, <laughs> the archivist. It, it felt like an amazing challenge. And then like, then like the, the character died and then I was like, well, well where's, where's my reward? <laughs> and uh, you don't, you, you, it seems like, I don't know if this is, this is, uh -huh. Right, but you don't get actually a reward for it for, for beating it. Is that right? You should. That sounds well, like it's a bug. Not, it's not okay. a huge. It's not a chest of gold, anyway, Mike. You get, yeah, a, I mean, you get a little bit of scrap and stuff like. You get some salvage and a few other bits. Like I got thirty-five salvage, one fuel, and one uh, munition. For right. It, okay. When I beat it. Okay. That's like, like a, standard. Yeah. Did somebody if, contact you? I thought somebody was like, "Hey, cool. Thanks for doing that." I can't remember how that mission oh, played out. Oh, I know what happens. Yes. Yes, oh, okay. something special happens after you do it. Um, you okay, do okay, get a okay. reward for it. Um, okay. Anyway, okay. I won't spoil yeah, it because that was it, it, it was a it, cool boss. It might have been because like we did we we died shortly after we beat the, the you know that boss. We I think we did one more jump and then we died. So like it would make sense if if there was like a an incoming call and you finally got something for it. But at the time, I was just like, we, we spent 20 minutes taking this boss down. I was like hoping for like a golden like shield or something like crazy. But uh, yeah. How about no, just it, a it, well done? Exactly. <laughs> at the back. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, the roguelike nature of this game, though, like yeah. is really good. And it's really yeah. funny because there's some people who have said they've beaten it like really fast. I've spent 26 hours of the game and I haven't beaten it yet. <laughs> it's like, that uh, is weird. But, but again, I did get killed in the tutorial. So. Yeah, yeah, and then the thing is, what I found with playing with Zim is he does not like to negotiate with anyone. <laughs> so if there's a if there's an option to negotiate, he's like, no, let's go and mess him up. I'm like, come on, dude, we can negotiate with them. He's like, no, no, no. So uh, that's that's probably what where we were going wrong, dude. But I can't, I'm, I'm looking forward to jumping back in and, and playing some more of this. But here's some uh, questions from the community. So these guys are from the Oculus Reddit. So this is X Wees. He asks, uh, any post-launch support plans yet, uh, DLC, etc.? Um, we haven't really d 
discussed that uh, externally yet. We're we're just kind of taking a like a wait and see kind of attitude to see what the demand is and like you know what what that would look like. Um, we'll definitely be we're we're planning like at least um, a patch in the near future to kind of fix some of the issues that have been coming up for people. Um, that's the big thing with releasing a game is you know we can test it as much as we can internally with like our through testers and externally with like a group of, and I forget how many, um, <laughs> but even then it's like, once you release into the wild, just people are going to find things that you're like, wow, there was no way for us to find that. Cause there's just of course. a lot of, a lot of moving parts, especially in a roguelite where of it's, course. there's a lot of things. So we definitely have something coming up soon just to kind of like address some of those issues and some, a couple of balance things, hopefully. So, yeah. And, um, and, and if people want to, if people wanted to give you feedback on the game, like where's the best place that they could reach you, like to sort of give you constructive criticism or feedback? Yeah, we have um, we set up a Discord that we a lot of the developers are just in most most times. Um, you can just go to fos.gunfiregames.com and then that's just to the invite. Uh, it's just fos.com or dot gunfiregames.com. Yeah. Um, and so yeah, like I said, there's a that's where a lot of the developers are. We got guys in there, like some of our programmers and uh, QA guys answering technical questions. Uh, I mean, there are a lot, you know, answering like, mm. hey, did this, is this supposed to be? And it's like, yeah, mm. you found yeah. something cool. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, we have like a, we have a feedback forum. We have kind of a, we have a spoilers channel, um, a general chat, a, a lot of the standard stuff you find in a Discord, um, but it's all run by us. So we, you know, we're in there. Nice. That's, that's really nice. That's what really, really nice. Mm. Yeah. I like that. People, can, people can find yeah, games too in there. We have a, oh, sorry. sorry. No, you go first, say, we, have a, we have a channel too for like looking for game kind of thing too. So if people are like, mm -hmm. "Hey, I, I don't have any friends on right now, but I'm That's looking great. for a multiplayer game right hey, now." Rowdy, so. hear that? Rowdy, if you if you you can find friends there, you can find randos there. It's cool. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Everybody on the channel's really yeah nice so uh the next the next question is from actually cass and cherry who are friends of uh the team so they they ask uh, any plans for character creation in future so i know you touched on it earlier that you didn't want to do a character creation and then or you know get killed instantly afterwards and you've invested this time into a character but any plans for maybe implementation of that in, in the future then again it'd be funny also, to see uh, cass and cherry make a character for like 20 minutes and then die like immediately i mean that would be <laughs> funny though. i definitely watched that video <laughs> yeah, I definitely think that is pretty much what happens. So that's that's our biggest concern. I'm not saying it's not it's not it's not impossible, but it, it definitely in some ways I feel like it kind of almost goes against the the randomness. Like everything else okay. is so random in the universe um, that just hey, you know what? Like it's funny too because sometimes you'll get like a crew of all guys or a crew of all girls, and it's yeah. I don't know whenever that happens, it's kind of fun. It's like oh look, it's all it's all dudes or it's all ladies, and it's <laughs> yeah. it's kind of that interest. Is kind of, to me, it's it's just one more of the randomness of the universe. That's that's kind of fun. And again, you, the goal is to not get people attached to their characters because their characters are quite disposable. It's just they're yeah. you know they're hopping yeah. body to body like uh, like <laughs> quantum leap just to try to get back to Earth. Yeah, and that's the funny thing actually because when me Zim and Panda played, we were all girls. So it became like the Charlie's Angels of the stars. Uh, and, and we were like, oh, we're going on a mission. I was like, ooh, like all running to the teleporter. It was really funny, like kind of playing out that role as well. So it made it even more fun in that sense. Yeah, the, the funny the thing is that you mentioned that because um, we, I play with, uh, with Lonely Viper and uh, Raider Hat. And uh, uh, Raider Hat, he had something wrong with his, uh, with his microphone. So he sounded like a, a robot almost the entire playthrough. But he was a <laughs> robot as well. It's, it made like such hilarious gameplay because he, then he went rogue, of course, on the ship. We, we barely did any jumps because it was still in the, in, in the beta. We just like messed around on the ship, like I think for like a good two hours, like uh, just chasing Raider Hat and then Raider Hat went rogue. And uh, it was so, so much good fun, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I think like that randomness really invites people to also role play a bit together. Yeah, of yeah. course. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So our next question is from Gunfire Games. <laughs> we want to ask. We want to ask John what size his RVCA shirts are. <laughs> always medium and always fifty yeah. fifty. So I don't even know what that means. Percent polyester. I always wear RVCA shirts. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So it's like an what in, does that stand in, for? In, in joke. Uh, it's a recession collection. It's, it basically, it's a, I think it's like the Greek word for clothing or something. It's pronounced Ruka usually, but yeah, I don't, I don't care about any of that. It's just, I like how they fit and I like that they're 50, 50, uh, blend. They're really comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> 
So it's like it's great question. Like your, your signature uniform, a bit like a Mark Zuckerberg, like he always wears the same clothes. Is that kind of the similar? Pretty sort much. Of it's, I'm like Batman. I just like just a whole closet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's funny. That's funny. It's funny when, when I saw that that pop up in the uh, in the in the office room. I did laugh. I was like, that's got to be in. Um, that's our that's our uh, that's our producer uh, yeah. Ben Gabard. So. Oh, well, shout out to you, Ben. Thanks for the, the awesome question. Don't shout him out. No, he doesn't. He doesn't. No, don't encourage him. <laughs> um, so here we go. One from uh, Advertiser. He says, um, all of the co locations in the beta felt a bit confined. Is there any plans for any outdoor locations coming up? Um, I mean, that was something we had planned early on. It just came down to just time and, uh, and resources. So it's mm. Unfortunately, like everything is on a station, um, you know, that could be something we'd look into if we did uh, DLC. It's definitely something that we were really excited about the idea of doing. It's just time. <laughs> yeah. 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 Certainly like, you know, for the future. And I know probably Zim is, is lo looking at me and like nodding the same way, like going to another planet would just be uh, next level. You know, like if there was DLC like that coming out in the future, that'd be something I'd definitely be interested in. I so, can I spin that off and just to, to an offshoot? Because sure. obviously there's a spiritual connection to, to FTL. Is there anything that FTL does or did that you guys wanted to do but couldn't? Uh, I'm trying to think. Heavy question. Oh, I, I know what it is. Um, there's so you have the basically an FTL. Like if you are just like you meet a pirate and then you do the whole no, I'm going to start shooting you. They pop up a message like maybe a third of the way through their health, or or they have a third left. And they're like, hey, we surrender. Please take these supplies. That was one of the things early on. We're like, yeah, we should totally be able to have people surrender. But because it like it it. FTL is a single screen, like, and it, it's all basically UI. This UI can stop everything else that's happening. But how are you going to stop, like, if I'm over there just pressing the buttons crazy and they're like, hey, you know, you're going to blow them up before you can get over an answer. So yeah. it was one of those things of, like, that's a really cool, like, um, thing for, like, somebody to surrender. Um, but just it, conceptually it didn't work in VR because it's like, well, I did, maybe – I'm hearing explosions, so I don't hear the call coming in. You can't really stop what they're doing and pop up with a message because that's kind of obtrusive. So it's, it was it was one of those things of like that kind of like it, it would add a little bit more, I think, to like the dynamic of the spaces, the ship to ship combat. But it was just something that just it didn't make sense in the in the, the way the game works. Mm. OK, yeah, okay. that's uh, the other thing. Sorry, Mike, I just asked one more question real quick. Because I we've been we've been playing this game a lot three player and one thing that I couldn't understand is you've got kind of the three stations in the in in the captain well in the on the on the bridge and mm -hmm. the one back right which is like the map of the ship I was always wondering why you couldn't lock the teleporter from there why that was a design decision because I personally do a lot of legging it back and forth wanting to see where we're going and then wanting to lock whatever ship we've come a, come across so I wondered why that was. Um, it was uh, not included in that panel. Um, I mean, that's supposed to be the, um, the kind of op station to like command people and to do things more than anything else. Um, I mean, the, the teleport thing was more of like making that connection one to one of like you're kind of committing. I'm going to walk over here. I'm going to hit the button, kind of like waiting for an elevator sort of thing of like, yeah. it's like that one to one of like, and then you get the power on when it's it's on and kind of that feedback. And even like people are like, oh, is this when we've had the question before? It was like, oh, is this where you're actually loading the station? Like when, because there's that delay, like mm. when you do it. And it's mm. not, it's supposed to be that breath of like, oh shit, I forgot to recharge my weapons. I better go do that real quick. As opposed to it being instantaneous and you just jump right on. You're like, oops, forgot that. So it's supposed to be this breather of like, hey guys, let's, let's gear up. Let's, you know, so it's it's meant to be that that moment for pause where like, oops, I forgot to heal. Let me go do that real quick. It's supposed to kind of just give you that dramatic pause before, you know, you go out. the design. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So we've got a question from uh, VIP3RLL and that is uh, any plans in the future for PVP? That's fine. You can PvP now on the player ship. Just start shooting you your friends. <laughs> you can. That is true. So friendly fire is enabled as default. So you can actually yes. murder your own teammates. Um, and they <laughs> work too. Yeah, and yeah. They work really well. <laughs> yeah. It's funny. Uh, I was playing with some other friends of the channel recently, uh, Swee Viver and uh, Paradise Decay. And Swee just literally picked up a grenade and just dropped it right in front of him. And then me, me and PD just like split and just watched him blow himself up. It was, uh, it was quite comical. <laughs> 
but yeah so um so there is pvp right now so you, you know it's just friendly fire essentially yeah yeah okay. pretty much okay so uh this is kind of a, a bit of a random question but uh from pingu598 uh what are your thoughts on microtransactions like loot boxes not necessarily in uh from other sons but in general um i mean i i think they can serve a, a good purpose um I, I do. I think they're right now. Everybody's hot on hating them, but I think they, they. I mean, it's. It really is like, it's a lot of reasons that like games go free to play because they find that like if you look at a game like uh, Star Wars Old Republic, where it was kind of faltering when under the old subscription model, it went free to play and actually became more successful because it was all loot based at that point. Where you've got these people that. You, I mean, they're not even not even the whale tier that the, the mythical whale that everybody talks about. Like this person spending thousand dollars. It's yeah. but there's the, the idea that like, hey, you know what? This person really likes this game. That probably would be it all evens out. All things considered, they're probably spending twenty five dollars a month with between loot boxes or you know cosmetics or whatever. Where mm. previously they were only spending fifteen. There's like it's this weird thing of like, well, if people want to spend more on the game, they can, and it gives them that option. So it's it's really weird. Um, I know it's super strange too. There's this this cultural divide um, where it's I, I know like in China it's actually changing though, which is interesting. But there's this idea of you should be able to pay to win. Why wouldn't you? You have money. You can you. There's I think there's a cultural thing of you're better. I'm better because I have money. So let me prove it in game. <laughs> where I, it's it, where it's kind of it is shifting more towards the Western uh, concept of like cosmetics are fine, but you know better should be determined by skill, not money. Yeah, no, absolutely. yeah. no that's right. I mean, in, in my opinion, like cosmetic wise, it's fine. I mean, as long as the gameplay is not getting affected, I'm playing a lot of Rocket League myself. I'm throwing at least like $25 into that game like every month to get like some new stuff, but it's cosmetic. So in the end, everyone can be like on the same skill level as me. I'm not getting better because I'm wearing a nice shiny hat, but I'm wondering, do you see this like happening soon uh, in VR as well, where we get like microtransactions on a whole new level, in a way? I would see. I can't imagine it not. I mean, phones have it, console games have it, PC games yeah. have it. I think it's just inevitable. It's just it's really figuring yeah. out what that looks like and that, and what's not yeah. gross for the for the end user. Mm. I think is what so how how do you think that's gonna look like? Do you have like any prediction? Because I mean, in VR, you can do so much more. Like right now, I played uh, Call of Duty this week, and you need to look at someone opening a loot box to get extra XP. So that's yeah. like an achievement. Yeah, yeah the social <laughs> so, like the social thing. It, yeah, that seems super weird. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think. I don't know. It's they gotta have good loot box opening animations first of all. Like like Overwatch, probably one of the you yeah. know A class oh, yeah. um, loot box experience. Oh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. It just depends. Like I think you could. It depends on the game too. Like like if it's if it's a first person game, does hey I got a cool hat really matter if you can't see your character as much, or is it like check out these sweet gloves I got, or you know look at this mm -hmm. cool dangle I have on my gun, or you know if it's if it's more of like. A third yeah, but, yeah, that's right. But I mean, VR, you are the person, right? So you can yeah. look into a mirror and think like, oh, I got this nice armor because I paid for it. So yeah, there are like new possibilities for that. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to give more ideas to developers because in my opinion, this shouldn't uh, be in VR yet because it's still growing. It would actually screw up the growth a bit in my opinion. But uh, like cosmetic wise, yeah, I mean, it's not really harming anyone. Mm. It actually was in there already. Um, the one that, and I, I didn't like it, but um, it was in E Valkyrie, and they actually took a step backwards after they'd implemented a lot of the kind of microtransaction type stuff in there. So the more recent patches have kind of removed a lot of that from the game. They step, took a, big, a major step back. Um, the other thing I would say, Nathan, just to that on a platform basis, I totally expect that after the Oculus Connect announcements at a platform yeah. level, mm -hmm. same kind of thing we're seeing in HTC Vive is, you know, in Steam Home. You have all these little trinkets you can unlock by different games. That's a market straight off the bat. Anyone who's played Battlegrounds will know yeah. you get some you get some gear or some specific clothing mm. items, and wow, the uh, the you know, the yeah, amount no. of money you can spend on something that's rare. Yeah. Mm. That's no, but they, they start off. I mean, they start off easy, and I mean, casual games right now go really hardcore on it. You know, they go really far where it's almost impossible to get certain things. You know, you can you need to spend like a lifetime to play with a certain character. Um, but um, yeah, I'm just I'm just really wondering how fast this will progress within like uh, VR in a way, you know. Yeah. Um, 
So yeah. yeah, that will be interesting to see what happens. Definitely, but like you say, I think the inevitable yeah. is coming. Uh, really... I mean, right now it starts. It's starting already. I mean, we see pre-orders now, where you can pre-order a VR game. I, I never pre-order games. I don't think it's smart. Always wait for the reviews and then buy a game. But um, yeah, you also see that happening right now. So mm. yeah, we'll see. And mm. I'm not sure. Like, I'm not sure if it was from other sons or another game. But you could get like a golden gun if you yep. pre-order the game, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's a nice way to get people in, of course, uh, yeah. as long as it starts up. I was going to say, I think we were the first actually Oculus game to do that. And it was funny because yeah. it shows up as a microtransaction um, <laughs> under the like description of the game, like this supports microtransactions. So there's there some people on our Discord that were very worried what that meant. It's like, whoa, 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 that's the only way you can get this very <laughs> cool gun. So right. it was it was very much like um, it was like a first for the pre-order. So it's like, hey, you know, why not? Just it's it's kind of easy to do a golden gun. We can give it a cool new effect, mm-hmm. um, and then you know something fun for people who are basically yeah. early early supporters. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Because you also supported people that helped out in the open beta, right? With uh, constructive feedback. Yeah, yeah. like uh, we definitely went through on Reddit and our Discord and uh, a couple other social channels to see like people that were you know really passionate about the game. Because um, I mean, the VR community at this point, like that's that's what's important is like the, there's a, a very hardcore group of passionate folks like yourselves that like they were very much like on the front line, like hey, you know what this happened, or hey, I'm having this problem, or hey, what what if you did this? Like the movement stuff was a huge huge revelation for us. Like because internally we either played comfort, like two dudes internally played comfort, and everybody else played the full locomotion, and we're like this is good. And then there was like these requests for that, and like wow, we never thought of that. That's actually pretty easy. We just didn't know that was something people wanted so we wanted to kind of thank people and we sent them out a free copy of the game yeah that's a really really nice way of doing it that's a really nice yeah. way of doing it and i like the fact that you're open to all this feedback as well like through your discord and everything else exactly. very very smart um yeah. so we've got two more questions to go so um the this question is uh, will there ever this is from the vive reddit actually <laughs> uh this is uh, from Fugazification, I think his name is. And he says, will there be uh, two-handed uh, weapons added to the game in future? Uh, again, a never oh. say never kind of thing. But uh, currently, there's not really a plan for it. Um, internally, we just, none of us really were excited about the feel of that. It it always kind of feels awkward. And we've already had people like say, like, hey, I can't hold my hands up for this long because I'm get tired or whatever. I'm like, that's even worse is having to hold it like this constantly. So we kind of like the idea that you can kind of run around with your just hands down and just move around, and just fire off shots or have a shield or, yeah. uh, or just have like uh, your uh, mini map up and then have a gun yeah. on you. So there's like multiple ways to play like that. I, I mean, it's possible. It's just, it wasn't like something any of us internally were like, this is really awesome. Um, yeah. Yeah. You kind of need like aim, at that point you need like aim down the sights and, and we got a little crazy with our designs that that didn't even work <laughs> at the end we kind of realized like oh you can actually aim down the sights with any of these things and we got that request a lot but it's it's just like we went a little too crazy with the silhouettes and they like some of the guns it's like the barrels here but the the top of the guns here so they would never line up even if we did add some weird aim down the sights mode so right. I, I think it's possible so- yeah. So it was, a, it was a conscious design move on your part to to make it more accessible in a way, uh, and 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 easier to play for longer periods of time. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. I think a lot of like it's it's kind of funny. I always say it's like like people that are sitting and playing, they kind of look at their their characters look like they're kind of T Rexing around because their arms yeah. are kind of out here. But yeah. it's just like that's how a lot of people play for long periods of time. I think if it's <laughs> more of a short burst thing, yeah. two, two 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 handed weapons like there was one in um, in Dead and Buried in some of the stages and it, it definitely is much more of a it's a it's a more intense thing but again those are in the pvp maps so yeah. it was it was like you know it was it was over in a couple minutes it wasn't like i'm playing for hours like this holding my hands and trying yeah. to shoot things so i think that's the thing like the community ask these kind of things without realizing the full ramifications of what they're asking for because like you say it can be very tiring you know like me and zim we played for like two and a half hours straight i think like time flew really quickly but it, it can be quite exhausting afterwards. You, you're quite tired and uh, without realizing, you know, so, so yeah, it's interesting that that's why you chose that path. Adrenaline has a factor there as well, Mike. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. there was actually a related question I had about, uh, cause a lot of the first person um, games have stabilization for the second hand possible. And I was wondering if kind of like an onward or a, a BAM method where if you chose to be going with a solo weapon because some of the weapons are quite large yeah if 
there was the possibility for a second hand supporting it so you can steady your aim. Because sometimes there's enemies quite far away and you're trying to use an accurate weapon to hit them. Um, you know, one hand can be a little bit unsteady. That was just an idea I threw out there because I, I noticed it in comparison with the other titles. No, definitely. There's, there's, I'm not saying it's not inv- it's a not valid uh, method. It's definitely interesting. And again, we could explore that. Like if we add more content down the road, we could try a mm-hmm. two-hand game or two-hand gun just because people have, a, have been asking for it. It's yeah. definitely not something we're against. It's just at the time, it's like, hey, you know what? These, these guns need to be functional this way. And it's, it's kind of like what we were internally, what we were feeling like this is exciting to have. Yeah, I think it's a good like, design dual choice. Wheel, dual wheel, dual wheel. Like, it's like, why would I want this? I mean, there was a couple, I think there was one or two outliers um, uh, who were quickly silenced um, that said they wanted to make guns. <laughs> it's like, hey, man, it's cool. And it's, yeah. But it's like, yeah, it's definitely something we, we were conscious of, but it was like, eh, we didn't really want to pursue it. Okay. And then the, the final question is for from LRJ. And he just says, uh, will the game be an Oculus exclusive forever? Uh, obviously, he's from the Vive Reddit, so he's a Vive man. Um, you know, do you think it's going to be tied to the Oculus platform forever? Um, it's hard to say, probably, um, in some respect. Uh, but I don't know. It depends on what the future holds, really. Um, yeah. it's, it's being Oculus published is yeah. definitely makes it a high likelihood that it will yeah. be uh, Oculus of exclusive. Course. Of course, yeah. So, if you, have you guys got any more questions for John uh, before I wrap this one up? I think uh, we've covered uh, oh, pretty much everything. Or John, have you got any questions for us? <laughs> um, I don't know what, what's got you most excited about VR in the coming. We're almost at the end of the year now. It's what's Just the social what side of it. Yeah. yeah, like, you know, the social element, like, you know, when me and Zim played uh, this game and when we've played other games with this core group of people in the past, like, we tend to have such a blast together. And I think it's that feeling that you you actually, although we're all in different places around the world, that we feel that they're, they're next to us in a way. And that that feeling of being with someone on an adventure is just amazing. And it's, it's one of those things with VR that you can't really describe or or tell someone about until they actually experience it and and they feel it for themselves. I think that's the magic about VR is that feeling of presence that you can be with other people. And for me, that's what it makes me so excited about the whole VR uh, platform in general. For for me, it's uh, it's the uh, the immersion, really, of like you know that you can literally say like you know what tonight I'm I'm going on an adventure, you know, and you you put on your headset and you're in a completely different world and you get sucked into a, a story. I think that is uh, something that I mean you can suck them into like regular 2D 2D games and movies and all of that, but you know VR just takes that really to like the next level, and that is for me really the thing that excites me so much. I would say the unexpected, and you know what I mean by that when I say that, John. <laughs> in VR, when something comes at you and you didn't expect it, whatever that is, something jumping out of a wall, something that you found that you didn't realize was part of the experience. That, for me, is the part where, like, you can break the rules in VR. And so I would encourage developers to just do that. Like, okay, maybe you've got a train simulator game, but all of a sudden, boom, you've got karaoke in there for just no bloody reason. Like, sometimes those forays can be really valuable. And that's actually what I found in From Other Sons, and I I won't, you know, give any spoilers. Those of you who've seen the clip will know it. Um, (laughs) But... I I have never been more terrified in a VR experience than I was in from other sons. I would just say that. I have been laughed into the air in another experience than I have from other sons. I'll say yeah, that video got a lot of play in the office. We enjoyed it thoroughly. Yeah. Glad you did. Working as intended. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, for me, um, it's like um it's just like meeting people you would usually not really meet in real life in a way, you know, where it's like uh, People always point in a way in real life, like, ah, you're looking like that. So I would never be friends with that person. And then when I meet people in VR and then I start to also like follow them on Twitter, for example, because you like also want to socialize with them on a whole different level. Then you realize sometimes like but this is a person I would usually say like, yeah, but I don't like a person like that or he's or she's looking like that. So like the judgment is gone in a way, you know, so you like VR lets you meet people that you would usually not really meet, you know? And like, again, about VR chat, I I know I keep on rambling about it. It's like one of my favorite things of this year, but like, you know, then there's a guy, he's a penguin, okay? I'm just chilling (laughs) with a penguin for an hour and yeah, it's funny, it's a penguin, it's not a person, but then 
he's like, hey, uh, you want to play something else uh, later? And I'm like, yeah, sure. And then you jump into another game, and he's telling some more about himself. And then, then it starts to get interesting, where you really become friends in a way, you know? And yeah, so VR really uh, brings new people together in a way, you know? Yeah. Social-wise, yeah. 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 Well, the show has run on uh, super long, but this always seems to happen when we have developers Special. on board because it's, it's, uh, it's always great uh, communicating with developers about games and, and getting their perspective on things. Uh, so I'm just going to wrap up the show now. So just to remind you guys that this is a weekly VR, AR and MR talk show that is live streamed every Saturday on Nathie's YouTube channel. You can tune into the show live at 4 p.m. in Europe, 3 p.m. in the UK and 10 a.m. in the central U.S. If you miss the podcast, you can catch up with it every Sunday where I upload the whole video to my own YouTube channel, Virtual Reality Oasis, or you can listen to the audio only version, which is available on Google Play Music and on iTunes. So thanks for joining us for the show. I hope you enjoyed this one. And very, very special thanks to John for joining us as well. We really, really appreciate you coming on board. Uh, So thanks again to you and uh, we'll see you uh, on next week's show. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thanks everyone.